Right, okay, oh boy. I think I'm live now. I was uh, just having to mess about with the phone there because it, uh, for some reason, it, it, my image was upside down. It, it, it's supposed to correct itself, so I had to turn the phone around, so now it's in a, uh, do it. Anyway, uh, welcome to March and March live stream. I've got a few topics to talk about, and I'm just going to talk while I'm on the, I don't know, uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, because the thing is, because of the way the phone is, I've got to talk into the phone and then turn the sound down. Uh, I've got to talk into the phone here for live because it's a better camera than the uh, laptop down here. But uh, all the comments and the questions and comments come on the laptop, not on the TV over there. Oh. Anyway, yeah, I've got a few topics tonight. Um, let's see, where am, I, where am I at? I'm going to be uh, just finishing off that bit of water. I'm going to be having some lager tonight instead of vodka. Lager with some lemonade in the in the top. Uh, oh, Dr. Luther San, the king is back. Hope you're still, hope you are good, buddy. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm good. A little bit, uh, a little bit hot bothered. I'm, I've actually calmed down some <laughs> since uh, since earlier. I was um, I was stewing like I do. I was stewing on what that woman done and said. Um, because I, I said in the little introduction video about an hour and a half ago, a three minute video, that um, I, this actually happened, not, not a great deal, but it, it happens. It's, uh, it's where, you know, if I see somebody who's getting taken advantage of and for whatever reason, they're not in a position, they, they just accept uh, what they're being given, I, I quite often, you know, chime in. They don't always listen to me, like the guy up the, you know, at the, at the train station. But, uh, you know, for what it's worth, I, 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 try, and, I try and help out. And uh, anyway, so, all right, so we got Dr. Luther San. We got W. Huds. Hello to you. Evening to you. Um... Right, I'm gonna. Yeah, what was that? Uh, I forgot what that brand of logo. I think it was. Uh, uh, I'll show everybody just in case they're interested. It's uh, Carlsberg. There we go. Yeah, I don't often. Uh, I, I like sort of a uh, Heineken Carlsberg. I had some Stella last week. That was pretty good. It was on. It was on special. They, the co-op do a, a four bottles and some four bottles and a pizza, like for a fiver, that kind of thing. They do that. So I tried it. It was pretty good. Uh, Toby Snooks. Hello to you. Evening, Mark. Hope you are. Hope you are well. Indeed, I. I am not too bad. You know. Anyway, what I'm doing? I'm waffling on. I'm just reading a few. Um, Reading a few shout outs here and a few comments just to give people a chance to, uh, to, to tune in. And I'll get to the story. I've got a couple of stories actually. Yeah, well, I want to talk about the, in, in, uh, the confrontation I had with the ticket issue woman. I tell you, it's unbelievable the, 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 what they do. Because like I told the guy, anyway, I'll tell you about it, but I, I told the guy, they're, they're preying on the fact that you see the uniform, the stern voice, the official behavior and you just go along with it which people do they're, they're tuned into uh, into behavior that way um almost showed you my address then there you go i've got another letter from the uh, television people it's unopened i got it so it was in the door uh, in the letter box when i got home i shall open this up live when i'm done with the uh, this other story and then i'll read you what's in it it's going to be the same old shite that the uh, the other 10 letters that they've been sending me over the months. Um, but I'll read it to you, and we'll have probably chat about that. Uh, Billy, that's Carling, not Carlsberg. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. 
There you go. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you better write something than I've got. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, you know what? It's because I was reading it in the screen. I was reading it because it's backwards when I look at the screen. For me, it's, it, it reads backwards. All right, yeah, you're right. Carling. Um, yeah, Carlsberg has got a green can. Carling. You know what? Because I, I, I prefer one over the other, but I don't know which one it is. Norm normally, normally it's about price, like, um, like most things. I go in there, I'll look at, say, three types of lager that I'm familiar with, and I'll, um, and I'll look at the pence per litre breakdown that they have nowadays. And, uh, you know, when it was, so it's a toss-up between Carling, Carlsberg, Stella, Budweiser. I'll look at the four of them, the cheapest one per litre. And uh, that's how I uh, choose them. Uh... Smythe, evening to you. I'm not sure how they spell that, how to pronounce that. O E I N. Is that is that Welsh or something? Oh, no, no, Smythe. Anyway, evening, Mark. Hello. Um, TV letters. Do what I do. Bin them. Oh, oh well, I do. Um, normally, I have a read of it just to see what kind of threatening language they're going to come up with, and it's always the same. You're under investigation, or we're going to send your details to the investigation department, <laughs> or the serious investigation. Uh, la, la, let's see. Dwayne Dibley, you ever done DMT? DMT uh, isn't that the um, the 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 component out of marijuana in a in a sort of a liquid form? Uh, I don't think if it is. I if I'm, I, I've heard of it, I haven't used it. A few names says evening mark. Not seen you live for a. Oh, not seen you live. Off you before. Evening, Mark. Not seen a oh, not seen a live. Oh, are they one too many Fs? That's what threw me off. Uh, not, not seen me live before. No, well, yeah, I've done loads of lives. You know, um, yeah, I've done dozens and dozens of lives. But uh, yeah, you know, I did one uh, a couple of days ago. You know, look, have a look, have a look in the back catalogue. You, you, there's a, you know, they're a bit long though because they go between two and sort of three and a half hours or so. You know. Uh, Smythe, I'll call you Smythe because I don't know how to pronounce that first one, first name. Uh, they even tried threatening me with some fake evidence claiming I've been watching live TV. Oh, I'm talking about TV people. Even though I didn't have a TV, only a PC. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they'll lie, you know, like they used to do in the old days. You know, they used to come to your door and say, right, we know what channel you're watching. We know what room in the house it is. Uh, they're just, you know, playing the odds. You know, and the majority of people, like, oh shit, they really must know what they're doing, you know. It's, anyway. Oh, Smythe says, yeah, Welsh. There you go. Yeah, my mum's, uh, my mum's half Welsh, which I guess that makes me quarter Welsh. Yeah, luckily it's pretty diluted, so I mean, uh, I'm only a quarter. Anyway, yeah, I've been to, I've been to Wales. Yeah, they don't like us up there. We we went uh, we went and stayed in my my, two, my brother and I we, we stayed in our aunt's house they they moved back here and we there was the house was vacant so we stayed up there a place in Blina, right at the foot of the mountains you know. Uh, anyway, everything shuts about five o'clock except for the pubs the the shops the fucking petrol station everything shuts. So we went down the pub we we come out and the you know they, they were screaming at us down the street about English go home and all that kind of like like we're gonna take their. <laughs> well, they haven't got any fucking jobs to take, you know. They got they got nothing that we want, you know. Uh, but we're not in, we're not welcome to it anyway. That according to them, you know. Ugh. Wow, that's a bit sharp. Richard Hogg, hello to you. Oh, uh, Dwayne Dibley says no. That's T H C. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. I, and then in that case, I don't know what DMT is then. Dwayne Dibley. I don't know what DMT, but I've heard of THC, is what I was thinking of. Richard Richard Hogg, it's Carling Raver. It's uh, indeed, it's Carling Black, Carling Black Label. Uh, not Carlsberg, indeed. What's... Uh... Oh, Dwayne Dibley says, that's what you smoke in, in a bong. Oh, the DMT. Oh, oh I, I don't know. I'm, I'm getting confused. Any road. 
All right, look, uh, anybody want to hear that story about uh, me having a run-in with that woman um, ticket inspector Nazi? Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you about that story if anybody's uh, interested. Uh, all right. A few names says Dime Vi... Oh, I see. Special chemical name. I thought it was like several words all mushed together, but it's um, dime thigh trip to mine to min. All right, <clears throat> okay. The story about what happened. Uh, it's a psychod psychedelic. A few names says. There you go. Okay, now picture the scene. Right, I finished work at three. I have to get to the bus stop. Uh, Actually, it was lucky because the, bu the bus arrived a little bit early, which uh, if it had arrived on time, I would have missed this whole thing. So my first bus arrives, I get on it, we drive to the train station, right? The train station slash bus station. Like, you know, so I get off the bus, have to go swap over. I've got to wait 10 minutes for the, uh, five minutes for the, for the uh, second bus. Right. So I'm sitting there, right? Imagine, imagine the Milton Keynes uh, train uh, bus station. There's, you know, it's like it's like a tunnel, a clear plastic tunnel with lots of benches in it. And it, just to give a picture, I'm sitting on that next to where the bus should arrive, and um, I'm looking around, looking at the people, and then I notice over to my left, twenty, twenty-five feet. There's a ticket dispenser woman who I recognize I've seen her and another guy around uh because I get the you know uh you know to, on the way to work I see them moseying around never knew exactly what they did but I I kind of figured I assumed that they were some kind of litter patrol people and uh Dwayne Dibley it's the council's job to pick it up indeed they do have council litter pickers around there I used to do that for a while and they do, you know, with the bags and a long picking stick and they go right up and down. Uh, anyway, so, oh, I tell you, so, so anyway, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I look to my left and there's the, the, that, that young woman that I recognise. She's talking to a guy, right? And I figured this is not going to, uh, this is not sort of good. So I'm, I'm sort of trying to, I'm straining my ear, trying to listen. I can't hear much, but I'm hearing the odd word come in to give me a picture of what's going on. And I can hear... Ident identification like this so I thought, oh shit that's not good you know she's asking for id and uh, and i'm looking at other people as if to say she's got no business asking for fucking id she's a you know ticket dispenser woman but nobody's interested so um I i'm watching and the guy get takes off his bag and he pulls out um he pulls out a, a little wallet thing Hands her uh, 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 look, what looked like a debit card or something, and she's going, "No, that, that's that's no good. We don't need that at the moment." Uh, but so he puts it back, gets a, something else, maybe a driver's license, <coughs> something with his address on it or something. And I'm thinking, "No, no, no! You don't need to be giving her anything. Stop it!" Like this, I'm talking to my, you know, thinking to myself, and so, "Oh, no, no, no!" So, so he's, so I'm watching him, and he's handing over the ID, driver's license, or whatever it was, something with an address. And I thought, no, because then my bus overshoots the bus stop and ends up in a bus stop on the other side of where they are. It should have arrived by me. It overshot them. They're, they're 20 feet away and it overshot them by sort of 10 feet. So I'm walking towards them, toward the bus that uh, I want to get on. And uh, as I get to them, I stood next to the woman and I said to the guy, you don't need to. I, I said to him, I promise you, you don't need to give her the identification. She's not an officer. You don't need to give her anything. And I walked off. And she's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah yes, he does. Yeah, he has to give me because I'm, uh, I'm more authorised to be clicked. You know, and I'm, I'm not even listening by this point, right? I'm walking on to uh, try and jump on my bus. And she said, you know, I told him straight out, you don't need to give her anything. She's not an officer. Uh, so I overshoot, I walk past them, there, there's a, there's a hold up on the bus, the bus driver's getting off, he needs to go take a leak, there's a new driver coming in, so we can't get on the bus, we have to hang about. And, uh, 
W hugs. They got no authority to ask for ID. Exactly. You know, if they were any DJ, what I've seen programs on them, they'll, these fuckers will hide behind corners. They'll be watching people with a cigarette thinking, well, it's a 50-50 chance. I mean, there's no litter bins around, so it's obviously it's going to go on the floor. Then they pad. Anyway, so I tell this guy, she's not an officer. You don't have to give her anything. You don't have to, you just put it back in your pocket. Just don't do it. I walk away. There's a, there's a problem with a bus. Driver's getting off. New one's coming. He's not here yet. There's a bit of a delay, blah, blah, blah. So I see her on my right now. She's, she's, um, she's talking to the man. And uh, so what I do, I inch forward. So now I'm sort of, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm like eight, ten feet away from them. I'm trying to sort of get close, you know, to sort of like figure, well, I'll just watch what's going on. Cause... And then what she does, she takes him and the dummy follows her. He, she takes him further. She must have seen me because she knew I was trouble. She takes him further away, another, another 15 feet away from me. So uh, what I do, I just go forward another six feet and I'm standing, um, I, I, I must be standing 15 feet away from them by now, I, I guess, because I'm inching forward a little bit. And I, I, I again, I'm sort of just on the borderline of how much I can hear. I can't hear everything, but I can, I can read the body language. Oh, that was the thing. Um, she said, uh, I, I heard the, you know, mumble, mumble, mumble. I heard the words fixed penalty. Oh, so now I'm sort of paying a bit more attention and I'm watching the guy and he's talking to her and his reaction was, oh man, I can't, I, honestly, oh, I can't believe And I'm, I, you know, I can't understand what he's saying, but I can read from his, what he's just, he's just been told how much the fucking fine is. That's what he was because I found out afterwards, after the confrontation with her, what and that's what it was. He uh, he said to her, he must have said to her, how much is it going to be? She's 85 pounds. And he's like, oh, my, oh God, yeah, but I just, uh, uh, like this. I'm reading all this on him, right? Uh, anyway, so he's carrying on. He pays with, with a debit card. She's got a machine that fucking, you know, does all this shit. At least, uh, at least that's what I think it was, you know, because I think she's, the machine does it, it issues a, a ticket. Uh, industrial jobs worth indeed, Dwight Dibley. Yeah, I tell you, I don't know how these people sleep at night. So, he's carrying on because he's just learned how much the fucking fine is, right? Which I didn't know. I found out moments later when I was chatting with him. And, um, and then I figured, right, okay, well, there's not a lot I can do for this guy. I told him he doesn't believe me. He's, he's the type of guy to go along with what he's being told you know, if this woman told him to fucking jump off a bridge, you know, he's like, okay. Well, you know, people do. They follow authority with no question, and it's really dangerous. Anyway, so I leave them to it there. And I'm just, um, you know, I'm standing there, you know, and, uh, and I'm thinking, uh, shit. Okay, because my bus has gone, right? Because whatever it was, there was a problem with the driver. He's going to take a leak. The new driver's not coming. They put it out of service. He drives off. So now I've got seven minutes to wait for the next bus. So I'm watching the bus driver. She's finished with him, and she comes, like, all of a sudden, like, they, wow, there she is. She, she comes out, in, in, and what she's done, she's not like, you know, like, like you know, like, you know, you've got an issue with, uh, no, she's there. She's straight on. You know, straight, not sideways, straight on. And, um, I hope that's clear enough. Straight on to me. And, uh, she says, um, she says, uh, yeah, you, you have an issue with um, me dishing me out a t ticket. And I said to her, I don't want to talk to you. But yeah, yeah, you, so you've got, a, you've got an issue, have you? And I said, uh, I don't want to talk to you. Go away. And she's going, uh, and then get this, right? I don't know whether you can, I'm going to come forward over a little bit here so you can see my face. I say to her, I mean, because what I've done, I've tried to gauge her. She was actually, if I was to put my arm out, you imagine if you do that now, put your arm out, the fingertips is where she was. That's how close she was. I mean, I, obviously I didn't put my arm out to her to, at the time. It would have been a threat and uh, probably got my ass kicked or something, you know, up and down the street. But uh, if you can imagine your arm out, that's how far she was at the fingertips. Because I remember thinking at the time, she's, she's within arm's reach here, you know what I mean? 
And uh, so she comes up square onto me, not to the side, not to my side or to her side, but square on. And uh, yeah, she's saying, um, you have an issue with me uh, dishing out tickets? And um, you know, I said, I don't want to speak to you, go away. And she's going, oh, come here. she's going, I'm not going anywhere. And she fucking winks at me, right? And um, I said, listen, I don't want to hear what you have to say. She's saying, yeah, well, well I, I have a, I have a, a lawful um, obligation to, I have to be dishing out tickets. And, I said, and I'm cutting her off all the time. I'm saying, I don't want to hear it. Whatever you have to say, I don't want to hear it. Go away. And she's going, I'm not going anywhere. Like this. And uh, I say, listen, I don't want to speak to you. Okay. You uh, move along. She, she says, no, I, I, you know, like, she's not going anywhere. And, um, you know, I'm going to stand here and talk to you. Okay, like this, winking. She must have winked at me the fucking four times. It was, I don't know whether it's a nervous tick or a, a thing she has, or whether she was trying to elicit a, 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 a violent response from somebody like me. I'll tell you what though, because the way she was acting, if it was any other situation, she would have got her ass fucking booted up to her ears, you know? But anyway, so she's, uh, so I'll say to her, all right, again, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to speak to you because I'm cut. So when she's saying, well, I have a right to, uh, it's my job to be, you know, I have a right to be issuing tickets and uh, you have no business and uh, I'm, I'm cutting her off. I don't want to hear what you have to say. Go away. And she's saying, I'm not going anywhere like this yeah. and expecting me to go. And uh, so I'm, I'm saying, um, so then I started by saying, um, you know, you know, like go away. Uh, stop speaking to me, please. Stop harassing me, please. I'm, I'm doing a please every time. Stop talking to me, please. And the thing is, remember, she's at arm's length, and then she's uh, she's sort of like you know she's like being a bit defiant. She had a very confident expression in her face. She must have known. I'm, I'm certain it's because she had a camera. She knows that uh, if any violence happens, she's going to get some compo. The guy's going to jail. She's going to be in the right. So she was trying to elicit a response, knowing that she had a camera. Uh, anyway, so I'm cutting her off. I'm not letting her finish her sentence by saying that... Uh, oh, that, that was it. And then she said... Um, she said, I, I could write you up for obstruction. And immediately... Obstruction was the word she used. I could cite you up for obstruction. My immediate... I had to fight the urge to say, fuck off and take your stupid fucking wink with you. I had to fight that urge, honestly. that Because that's what she was looking for. An instant, I, I knew, I kind of knew that. So I could cite you up for obstruction. I, said, I, I don't want to hear it. Uh, I don't want to speak to you. Go away. Please go away and stop harassing me. Stop harassing me. She, I'm not harassing you. Stop harassing me and go away. Stop harassing me. And she's talking and I'm cutting her up. Stop harassing me. I said, stop, you know, I was saying like, stop harassing me, please. Uh, a good eight times at least eight times, over and over again. Before, as she was starting to talk, stop harassing me, please. And then she uh, she started to get further and further. You know, she'd done that thing. If you ever, if you ever um, get into a conversation, a confrontation with somebody, anybody from McDonald's to uh, traffic warden to anybody who's in a position where they cannot fight, you know, assault you. It's not in, not in their interest to fight. You know, like, uh, like like a shop assistant, for example. It's not in their interest to instigate a fight. So what they'll do, they'll go away and they'll start saying, um, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, have a nice day. Enjoy your afternoon. Be, you know, stay well. See, you know, have a good one. But bye-bye. You know, good luck. They start doing that as they're going, you know, and that's to get a rise out of you. That's what they do that for. She started to do that. She's right in front of me. She's not getting anywhere. I'm, I'm cutting her off, cutting her off, cutting her off. Stop, stop harassing me. Stop harassing me, please. Stop talking to me. Please. I'm getting louder. She's going away, giving it, oh, well, uh, okay, um, nice talking to you. Have a nice day. And I'm like, stop harassing me. She's got, I'm not harassing. Stop harassing me, please. Stop harassing me, please. And she's talking and I'm cutting her off again. Stop harassing me, please. She's, get, she's getting further and further. She's like eight or 10 feet and I'm getting louder and louder because basically, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, as she's getting further, I want people to fucking hear this, right? Stop harassing me, please. And I'm deliberately throwing a please after every, because I know she's filming this, you know? 
Uh, it's just a bastard that I wasn't able to film it because I'm, you know, I'm going to start carrying my thing now. So anyway, she she's going away. She turns around and walks away. And and because uh, the, the trick is don't let them finish their sentence because they're, what they're going to do, they're going to say, I have the right to be here doing tickets and you've got no business interfering and I'm going to cite you up for obstruction. This is what she's trying to say, but I'm cutting her off. I don't want to hear what you have to say. Go away. And then, And that wasn't working. She was like defiant. She was, she, she wanted to, she's like in my face saying, I'm not going anywhere like this. You know, the fucking winking was weird, you know? And it was kind of annoying. Uh, ah, you could ask for the video footage. They have to give, it's gone down here now, have to give it to you. Well, that's the thing. I'm only assuming that she is. By the way that she acted, Right up close, within arm's reach, which is a very fucking dangerous thing to do with strangers. Um, and the way she was carrying on, threatening with, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, none of my business and it's uh, uh, signed me up for obstruction. All this other shit. And then me being very confrontational by cutting her off, cutting her off. Stop harassing me, stop harassing me. Um, if, I, if I knew for certain that it was filmed... Interesting. Actually, I could inquire. Do you know where I would go to get that? I mean, if that was a police officer, I'd probably go down the police station. This was a ticket litter ticket enforcement person. Would it be the council? Anybody know? Um... <laughs> Actually, that's interesting. Uh, war ready. I think the winking is uh, sexual harassment. I tell you what, though, but it was annoying. It was strange and annoying, and it was always after, no, I'm not going anywhere. You know, no, I'm not harassing you. You know, like that. It was fucking weird. Anyway, so she's doing the thing, like, yeah, have a nice day, and I'm like, stop harassing me, stop. She was deliberately going over and over, they have a nice day business, and I'm deliberately cutting her off louder and louder so people can hear. Uh, stop harassing me, stop talking to me, please. Stop harassing me, but I'm getting louder as she's going. Uh, and then she stopped talking and walked away. And uh, th then the guy, the, the guy who she, uh, <coughs> who she collared, <sighs> white van man, 999, good evening. F M C repair, Armar says the council. That's interesting. Actually, that's interesting. I uh, I could go up to the council. I think I know where the council offices are up the sea centre. I could go in there. Yeah. Just ask for the footage. Uh, they wouldn't even ask if it was filmed or not. Yeah, wouldn't yeah, he says wouldn't uh, but Billy says wouldn't even ask if they was filmed or not. Yeah, you're I think you're right, just go in there and say, look, I want the footage. Thank you ever so. I don't know what the how they'll give it to me. Maybe they'll download it into my phone and uh, if they do that then uh, I'll I'll do my best to download it <laughs> onto uh, onto the video here. Uh <clears throat> oh, I tell you, I'm I've got to I've got to start getting in the habit of bringing this phone with me because I'm just not used to it. So um anyway, so yeah. She walks off. She's not having any business with me. She's not getting anywhere with me. She, it's obvious that she's uh, she's trying to do the threatening bit. But like, you ever, you ever watch these programs? It's exactly like the police do. If they, if, if say you're standing in a place they don't want you to stand, they will come right up to you. You know, uh, within within arm's length or even closer. Because they, they want you to sort of like, you know, get away from me. And then they, bang, you're on the floor. That's what they want. And it's also an intimidation factor. I mean, she she was uh, she wasn't really all that intimidating. I mean, she was she was confident. She wasn't uh, uh, you know she didn't appear to be sort of um, second guessing herself by confronting me. She seemed fairly confident, and I just shut her down at every turn. I'm not interested. I don't want to hear it. Stop harassing me. Stop. 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 You know all of this. She's she's trying to get this, these words out. Uh, anyway, I, I digress. She walks away. Right. She's gone. Fuck knows where she went. She's disappeared. Uh, then the guy who she's uh, just collared, right, he comes walking by, he's looking for his bus. I said, listen, mate, I'm telling you the truth, right? Uh, she, 
honestly, I said to her, look it up, okay? She is not a police officer. She has no authority to stop you. She has no authority to detain you. She has no authority to demand ID. And she doesn't, she cannot force you to cough up your money. If you want to walk away, there's bugger all she can do. That's the bottom line, right? Because Stone Cold says, no, I didn't say that. But I said, that's all there is to it, right? She has no authority to, to, to detain you. Uh, if she has a police officer with them, maybe, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, you probably do, you know, just walk away as well. <coughs> and he said to me, he said to me, all I did was, right, I had a cigarette, you know, and I, I quickly put it on the floor because my bus was there and I needed to get on the bus. And she happened to be looking by the uh, rubbish bin or something and she collared him. But uh, the, the place is fucking covered with ice cream packets and Coke cans and... Uh, you know, drinks cups, those cardboard drinks cups all over the bloody place. She, she, I don't know where she was for them. Anyway, um, yeah, and I said, I said to him straight, look it up. You know, honestly, you know, um, I said, you know, she's got no business. And uh, I said, how much, um, how much was it? You know, how much she said, eight, he said, 85 pounds. Okay. And I actually fucking nearly shouted, like, what? Like this, 85 quid? Shit, I wish I'd have fucking... Choked a woman. The, uh, no, no. <laughs> but um, I couldn't believe it. And this, this guy was, he wasn't like close to tears, but you could see it was fucking distressing for him. 85 quid? I mean, that's like a day's wages. That's, uh, I mean, I don't know, uh, I don't know his financial background, of course, but I mean, who the hell can afford 85 pound for a bullshit reason like that? I mean, that's a, that's a, you know, it's, that's, that's a day's wages for for most people. And, um, yeah, 85 quid. <clears throat> so, um, and I said to him, listen, I don't know what to tell you, but this is a lesson hard learned. You know, honestly, you don't need to tell her shit. If, if you want to walk away, she cannot hold you. She cannot grab you. She cannot get in the way. She can... Bluff all she wants, saying, well, listen, if you go, I'll get a policeman and, uh, you know, she's full of shit. And if you call her bluff, like I did, I just wasn't listening to any of her stuff. She, she would, after she told me, after I told her to go away, she said, no, I'm not going away anywhere. Wink. Two minutes later, after a humming and hawing and me saying, no, 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 I don't want to hear it. Nah, 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 all this stuff. Um, go away, go away. Harassment. She turned and walked, you know, like they do. When they're not going to get anywhere, they're not going to, but you know, they, they, they can't do shit. And uh, yeah, this guy was stressed. You could see it in his face, losing a day's wages over, you know, over bugger all. So, um, so he was going backwards and forwards and they ended up talking to this other guy who was a, he was a fucking plonker himself. I said, did you, did you, you I, I don't know whether he was standing there next to me while I was having this argument with a woman, but I said, did you hear what just happened there? And, uh, you know, the, the, Follow my lead. If that ever happens, just follow my lead. Just do what I did and, you know, then I can't do shit. Anyway, I was talking to him and uh, and eventually the bus, uh, yeah, the bus came. The, the, the woman just vanished. After after she started walking away, she started walking away. Yeah, have a nice day. And I, yeah, 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 yeah. Stop harassing me. Stop harassing me. Go away, please. Um, after I turned, I never saw her again. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking around, looking in front of the bus station, you know, behind me, and you know, I, I couldn't see her anywhere. So she wasn't like hanging around and um, trying to keep an eye on me or anything. She tucked her tail between her legs and just upped and went. I swear to Christ, it and uh, yeah. So so I'm I'm thinking. All <laughs> so I get on the bus and uh, I'm looking out the window. Still can't see her. So what I'm going to do. Monday, and from then on, I'm going to take this camera phone, my Apple iPhone 8, if anybody gives a shit, I'm going to be uh, taking that, and if I see her, I'm going to start filming her, and I'm going to say to the camera, this is the one that I was talking about in the live stream, and uh, bloody hell, I've been talking 35 minutes on this subject. <laughs> uh, so, so with a bit of luck, what I'm going to do, I'll find her, I'll start filming her, I'll talk to the camera, and I'll say, this is the woman that I spoke to about on the live stream, blah de blah de blah and uh, if she sees me, ho hopefully she'll see me, hopefully she'll come over, hopefully she'll start talking, and, uh, and then I'll get it all on film, and then we'll have a big, a big laugh about it when I, when I load it. And, uh, 
Yeah, that's interesting. You know, if, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go to the council as well. If I can, uh, if I can get that. Um, mind you, I mean, I, I think legally they are obliged to give you the footage, but I'm, I'm told, I've watched videos of people trying to get footage from, from interactions with the police. And what they do, uh, on occasion, most of the time, I think, most of the time they say, yeah, you can have it when we get round to it, you know, so six weeks later, you know. Um, but I'll, uh, oh, actually, I've got another bit of news as well on a separate subject. I'll, uh... Where's he gone? Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, so, so if I can get the footage... I'll uh, I'll definitely try and show that you know. So anyway, that is the um, that is the thing, and I, I'll tell you what, because I really hate the thing I really hate in the world. Uh, I was going to say a few things, but I'd, <laughs> I think we can all guess uh, is being pushed around. I fucking hate that, and I hate watching somebody getting pushed around. And they are of the type to bend over and take it. I hate seeing that. Like this guy, the woman approached him, says, listen, uh, I've seen you throw a cigarette butt on the floor. Uh, I'm going to issue you with a fine. Uh, can I have your identification, please? Like this, like, okay. You know, I would, you know. Um, anybody with a, you know, a bit of wherewithal would say either, no, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go walk this way and you're not going to follow me, Okay. Uh, although that will instigate a fight, I'm sure, because she will follow you. But, um, but yeah, you, you just say, uh, no, thank you. Uh, I'll, sta I'll, I'll wait for as long as the, till the bus shows you've got that time to get a police officer. OK, so good luck to you. Get on the phone. I suggest you do it rather fast, you know. Uh, and then when the bus comes, you know, get on it. They cannot hold you. They cannot put their hands on you to hold you. They cannot go through your pockets, demand you empty out your pockets. They cannot demand any. Well, they don't demand money from you, sure. But there are no, no, no situation to uh, force you to, if you say, uh, no, thank you. you know, I don't have any ID on me. Uh, I left the house without my wallet. I don't have shit. So um, what are you going to do? So, you know, they, 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 they might ask you for your address to say, uh, no, thank you. you know. And uh, it's the same with the TV license guy when he shows up your door. You're under no obligation to uh, show any ID who you are. Explain, you know, under no obligation to explain that you live here. You're under no obligation to let them in. You're under no obligation to fucking talk to them, just shut it all. I'm still waiting for them to come round so I can film it, by the way, you know, but they, they still, uh, maybe, maybe maybe in this letter it'll say in there when they're coming round. So, uh, but yeah, the, the, this guy uh, gave it up. And um, I've seen video. You can find videos on both these subjects, the TV license, uh, these ticket people. They're crafty fuckers. I've watched videos years ago and they will, they will, they will see, they will see a smoker standing on the street corner, having a smoke, and they will stand behind them, to the side, not in front of them, like across the street, where they can be seen. No, they'll be like, oh, I'm just gonna, just gonna like, uh, hide behind a tree here. And, uh, and they're watching. As soon as that cigarette butt's on the floor, that's it, they're over there, right. Instant uh, fine. 85 pounds, you know? I've heard some places charge more, um, but I don't know, but uh, this is Milton Keynes, 85 quid. How the fuck do they sleep at night? And I was talking, yeah, the guy I was talking to, not the one that got ripped off, but the other guy, um, I was saying, you know, because the thing is, at the train station, I'm certain that they have, like, two bins to cover the whole bus station and the whole train station. The bus and the train station are together, you know. You've got the train station with all the mirrors, which they filmed one of the Superman movies, a segment of it, outside, actually all those hundreds of mirrors in front of the train station. Outside is the bus station. They've got two litter bins. No wonder the place is covered in fucking rubbish, right? So, uh, yeah, we got talking and, uh, you know, we were under the, we were, uh, we were agreed on the fact that she's trying to justify her job. Because if she doesn't collar anybody, they're gonna be saying, her boss is gonna be saying, well, we're paying you all this money to go out and fucking issue fines. Why, you know, we're not, Pain is not do it, you know. So uh, we're going to make some layoffs, uh, and you're first, right? So, so if she, as long as she keeps on issuing fines, that's justifying her being there. Of course, they could put litter bins. If the minute they put litter bins in that fucking bus station, she's out of a job, <laughs> guaranteed, right? Or you know, 
she, uh, but yeah, she, she's only there. Because, so, so what they do, they, they issue two litter bins, then wonder why the place is covered in rubbish. Then they pay her to go round and some other guy. I've seen two of them together on occasion. Um, they, they, they send them around to issue fines for people putting stuff, leaving some rubbish around. Admittedly, personally, I take my rubbish home with me, but that's just me. That's just the way you know we were told when we were kids. If you, you don't throw it on the floor, if you can't find a bin, you put it in your pocket and you take it home, right? But that's just me. But other people don't seem to do that. They'll they'll leave their uh, teacups around and ice cream tubs around. Uh, but yeah, the, the the minute they introduce some litter bins, like they bloody well should, then she's out of a uh, she's shit out of luck. And uh, yeah, so I never saw her again. So <laughs> um, but yeah, I've seen her over, I've seen her months, I haven't seen her recently as such, but I've seen them, you know, they, they would do like a couple of weeks uh, just milling around. But that's what they do. They just stand there, they just stand there talking to each other for ages, just watching people. And then they think, okay, let's, uh, let's have a wander down here. We stand over on this corner over here for a while. That's all they do. And they, they watch people to see, especially the smokers. They're not interested in the rubbish because if, you, if you're standing there with a teacup at the bus station or an ice cream, a crisp packet, there's the chance you'll put it in your bag. There's a chance, like most people will. And uh, but cigarette butts, what do you do? Stub it out, put it in your pocket? No. Odds on you're going to put it on the floor, and that's where they get their eighty-five quid fine. So uh, yeah. So my advice to you is, um, don't do it. You know, don't don't like like with the TV license people. Watch videos on YouTube. Watch other people's interactions with them. They have no authority other than the fact that they have a, a, a uniform and they look official and people are trained to obey authority, you know? You know, uh, my mum's the same. I've had this discussion about the police and TV licensed people uh, with my mum and she's of the opinion, well, I mean, they're doing their job. You know, it's like talk about the police. They, they're doing their job. I mean, they're helping us. Uh, Never mind about how corrupt an instance is that I bring, you know, talk about police brutality, uh, police uh, uh, misconduct, all that. Yeah, but I mean, they, you know, they're doing a dangerous job. They're, they're doing it, they're helping us, you know. They're not doing us a fucking favour. They're doing it for a job, you know. That's how they earn a living. It's not like a favour. You know, we pay them to do it. But because they're wearing a uniform and they're like, yeah, well, you know, just, uh, you know. So it's like that. So people are indo indoctrinated uh, at a young age to... Uh, li hey, you think, from a child, we are taught to obey authority, especially authority in a uniform. For example, how old do you have to be to need the assistance of a lollipop man? Think back when you was a kid, when they used to have... I don't know if they still do have them, but I mean, when I was a kid, they had lollipop men, lollipop women. For those, for those youngsters out there, this is a man or woman standing in the middle, you know, like like a, 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 the road that separates this one side of the street from the other where the school is. So they would come along with a big pole with a big lollipop on the top with stop, stand in the middle of the road, hold traffic, right kids, come across like this. You know, that's what they used to do, lollipop men. Uh, when was the last time you needed a lollipop? It was when you're like five years old. OK, so from a five year old, you're taught to obey this person in authority with a uniform. Stand there. Don't you move until I, the authority figure, hold traffic with my authority and then beckon you across the road with my authority when I tell you, you know, when I authorize it. That's basically what they're drumming into a five year old. And you grow up and then you have authority like uh, traffic warden authority like a nurse, a fireman, a police officer, of course, a teacher, uh, any authority figure you are taught, you know, I mean, it, it kind of wears off for some people, you know, some people, some misfits, they don't listen to the police or, uh, you know, I mean, if a policeman, if a fireman told you to get back, is that you, you probably will probably do it, you know, it's a dangerous situation. Um, so, yeah, yes, so you're taught. So um, the, the reason why this guy immediately gave up his ID when told or asked uh, was because he's been taught, well, she's wearing a uniform. Uh, she's got a little thing here. She says, I've done something wrong. I'd better, um, better listen to her. 
Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, yeah, I mean, I've never really sort of thought about it until just now, from a very, very young age. Because, all right, so, so you're five years old, you, you, you've got the authority, you're, you're being told by the authority of a uh, very first thing, the lollipop man. Then you get to school, and then you've got the authority of the teacher. The teacher is king. And then, then you've got the authority. If that doesn't work, if, you, if you're misbehaving then, then you've got your authority of the headmaster. Who's that? So you've got, you've got three, you've got, a, you've got three uh, authority figures before eight o'clock in the morning. You know, you've left your house, lollipop man, teacher, headmaster. They, well, you've got your parents, of course, before then and after then. Um, so, I mean, yeah. So I, I never really thought about it like that, but it's, I, I think it's true. You know, from a very young age, you're indoctrinated. And uh, for some people, it wears off. You know, um, y you know the, the people who sort of don't listen to authority, you know, the, the, the rioters and hoodlums and whatever else, they don't listen to anybody. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, listening to authority can be a good thing sometimes because you need the cap. You need a captain there. You know, you need somebody to take control. If there's an explosion at the supermarket, or a car is there's been a collision on the motorway or on, a, or on the street, you need somebody to say, right, you do this, you do that. You lot get farther back. You lot, you officers, make sure these people don't come any closer. You, know, you need people to delegate jobs. You need to follow authority. But when it, it's been, uh, when, when somebody who doesn't have the authority pushes their weight around, that's what I object to. Um, I've, uh, I tell you, the, the other instance, you know, I mean, I've, uh, I've spoken about this on my live stream last year, well, several years ago. It's back there, way ago. Some of you might remember is uh oh if anybody wants to hit the like uh, hit the thumbs up by all means go ahead that would be super fantastic that'd be f super what's the what's the fan um anyway what's i gonna say yeah some of you might remember the story about when i was uh, on a different housing estate uh one night i went from the house up the road to a chicken shop where they serve you know fried chicken and stuff yeah. and what happened was, uh, I'm getting my food at the counter, and all of a sudden, there's a big hoo-ha outside. There's a police van, and there's about half a dozen police officers, right? And what they do, they've gone up to the flats upstairs, uh, and they, they've dragged somebody out down to the street. Um, they, they, they did the usual thing, um, stand on them. What, they're laying on the floor, stand on them, say, stop resisting, stop, right, anybody listen, stop resisting, stop resist. what they do, they're getting witnesses to, to well, well, your honour, uh, the policeman was saying, stop resisting, I, I heard him say it six times, uh, like, this. that's what they're doing, they're getting witnesses, anyway, they're doing the usual thing, foot on the back, stop resisting, stop resisting, and I, and, and I actually said to myself, for Christ's sake, get on with the fucker, will you, you just, you've been here 10 minutes, get on with it. And all this, and I'm, so I, I actually said this, and I was getting a bit annoyed. Anyway, so, so, so the, and, and then uh, one or two policemen, uh, one one person trying to use the pepper spray, sprayed one or two of his policeman colleagues. So they're standing there with a bottle of water. You know, we've got pepper spray in the eye. That, that seems to happen quite a bit. They're just fucking slinging anywhere. Anyway, so uh, I said, oh, for Christ's sakes, look, come on, look, get on with it, will you? Look, it's been 10 minutes, just get him in the van, right? Get off of him, put him in a van. And um, I go back inside, get my food, and I thought, right, well, I'll tell you what, well, I was going to take it home, but I'll, I'll actually eat it in the shop. And um, so I'm sitting there eating, eating, the, eating the stuff. And uh, actually, let me just... Uh, um, yeah, and, and what happened was um, the, the, the policeman, I, I went outside, you know, as I'm eating my thing or something, I got away from the, the table, I put my bag inside. I come out and the policeman crawled, climbed through the hedge. There's a low hedge. He climbed through the hedge, came to this 15-year-old kid and said, uh, yeah, listen, uh, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to look at the footage that you've been filming uh, on your phone like this. And I, I swear to Christ, I used the words, that's bullshit. You're not allowed to be taking his phone on doing anything with his phone, looking at it, taking it, copying it, nothing. That you have no right to be doing it. And, 
And he said, ah, oh, yeah, well, I, I think you'll find, sir, uh, under Article 15 of, uh, you know, this. I look, something like that, Article 15, Article 21, uh, something. I looked it up when I got home. It's fucking Terrorism Act. That's what that article, the, 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 the article that he quoted to me, knowing that I wouldn't know anything, uh, he quoted what was for a terrorism fucking reason, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I said to the guy, that's bullshit. You're not allowed to be taking his phone. Listen, he's not allowed to be taking your phone. He's got, okay, I'll give it to you. Like this, he fucking hands it over. The policeman looks through his phone. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, no, there's nothing incriminating for us here. Okay, you can have your phone back then. You know. And then he's, he's, sound, he's, he's uh, well, oh, what was he doing? He was mouthing off to me saying um, about Article 15 and how, um, you know, I, I should be minding my own business. And I, of course, I'm mouthing off by now. I'm saying, no, 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 no. I'll stand here as long as I feel like it. OK, you know, and I'll uh, like this. I'm going to go in there. Uh, I'm done talking. I'm going to go in there and eat my dinner. And he's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go in there and eat your dinner. I said, yeah, I'm going in there. And eat my... Ugh. And then I finished my dinner. And him and his fucking policeman, mate, they're in the garage next door. I don't know what they were doing. I waited for them. I walked, in, I walked in front, saw them there. The police van's gone. It's gone 10 minutes ago. Uh, him and his policeman, mate, are in the drive, in the carport. Car port. It's like a over, you know, concrete, you know, it's a big square where you park your cars. In there. And, um, I, you know, I stood there and I, uh, I made it clear that, you know, made, wait for them to, they could see me. And then I just turned and walked across the street. And, uh, yeah, they never said anything. And it made me realise, and I, I explained uh, at the time, that because I blagged it, I, I don't know, as such, I stood my ground. I wasn't like, okay. No, I stood my ground and basically said, I'm not having it. And I, you imagine if you went to a policeman and said, no, that's bullshit. You're not allowed to be taking his phone. You have no business on his phone. He doesn't have to give it to you. If I was in the wrong, do you think I would have got my fucking collar felt? Bloody right I would have, because he would have used any reason to collar me. I disrespected him. I called him out in front of other people. I told him how full of shit what he was doing was. If there was any reason that he could have used, I would have been collared. But there was no reason. So he had to go. He said, yeah, 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 just, just go inside and eat your dinner. Um, and it's the same thing with this, this traffic, uh, this, this litter woman, you know. I stood there. And I said, not interested, go away, go away, stop harassing me. So she's like, yeah, but no, stop harassing me. And she, I'm blocking her off every, every time she got three words out. Stop harassing me, stop harassing me, stop harassing me, stop talking to me. If she had any way of collaring me for it, because she threatened me with obstruct, uh, not obstruction, um, tampering with uh, her ability to whatever the hell she used, um, obstruction, um, I can't think of the word. Anybody remember that word? It's where I'm inhibiting her ability to do her job, you know, obstructing her. Uh... If she had any case for that, she would have been on the phone. Right, I'm being, I've got a problem, uh, fucking member of the public over here. I need a police officer. Come over here right quick. She didn't have a leg to stand on, so she couldn't do shit. So, uh, you know, you have to call them out. You cannot, you can't, you can't be sort of like, yeah, okay, I'll bend over and take whatever you're giving. No, you stand there. If you get arrested, who gives a shit? You know, what are they going to do? Uh, um, arrest you for answering back to a policeman? Arrest you because you spoke up on behalf of somebody who was getting harassed by the litter-picking woman? They wouldn't even take that to court. I mean, if, even if you've got, if you've got 100, meet, 100 feet from the court, the judge would say, get the fuck away from here. Don't stop me bothering me with this bullshit. I've got too much work to be doing, right? They wouldn't get anywhere near a court, you know? Um, they wouldn't arrest you because they know there's a lawsuit in it. They don't. They'll mouth off and they'll try and scare you. And at the end of it, they'll walk away. They'll, Have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, good luck to you. Yeah, yeah, just go away. Stop arresting me. Stop it. Go away. Um, yeah, they've got a leg to stand on. Oh, and what if they do? What, what's the big deal? I'm, see, personally, I'm 52 years old. Um, I haven't seen the inside of a police station since I was 15, 16 years old, you know, uh, 
No, actually, I'll tell a lie. Uh, there was that time, and the next time I was about... Uh, actually, I started when I was a barman at 18. So the last time I was about 19. Last time I got taken to the police station. Or, or they asked me to go down. They, they come to my work like a bunch of motherfuckers. Chatted to me in the office and asked me to come down there after work. And, uh, you know, I can't even remember what that was about. But, uh, but yeah, I was about, I was about 19. So uh, that, that's like uh, that's like 30 something years ago. For me, if they say, if a policeman comes up and says, right, okay, I'm uh, hauling you in for, yeah, fine. I've got nothing else better to do. Uh, it'll be an experience. I'm not going to jail. <laughs> I won't even see the inside of a courtroom. Do your worst. And as long as you have that attitude, there's fuck all they can do. As soon as they say, if you're scared, if, if, you, if they say, all right, we're going to do you for... Um, uh, uh, you know, har harassment or I I interfering with the duties of a, you know, uh, if you're okay, you know, as soon as you say, um, oh yeah, okay, I'll back it, they got you. You know, when that woman said to me, when I said to the woman, I'm not interested in what you're saying, go away. She's like, I'm not, she st stood there, arms raised, I'm not going anywhere. She wanted me to go, and then she's what, and I just stood, I just stood my ground, I didn't move, I thought, you know, I want you to fucking chin on, let me tell you, I, I had to. Because that, but I knew that's what she was looking for. Don't get me wrong; I'm not in the habit of assaulting random people. Don't get me wrong; that it's just a, just a, the feeling was there. I, I, I'm old enough; I, I know the difference between thinking and acting on a feeling. There's two different things. Anyway, so uh, but yeah, she but, but that winking one was weird. That was like it was uh, almost like she's instigate. You, you know, yeah, I, I'm not harassing you. No, there's fucking weird fucker. Um, anyway, so yeah, as long as you stand your ground and don't give in, what's the worst that will happen? Look at it that way. You're not gonna you're not gonna get a criminal record. You're not going to court. You're not going to prison where you get 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 your cellmate Big Bubba fucking um, harassing you. Yeah, you know about harassment then, right? No, none of that's gonna happen. Anyway, so yeah, take a take a leaf from my book. And uh, yeah, so when I see this woman again, which I'll take, it might, it might, might be Monday, it could be a month from now, it could be several, I'll keep taking my phone and if I see her, I'm gonna start filming her and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully she'll uh, have something to say. Uh, all right, I tell you what, I will, go, I'm gonna read a few comments and then I'm going to show you a piece of good news. Uh, War ready. Mark, have you locked your doors today? She might be trying to break in. <laughs> I tell you. No, because the thing is, she when she was speaking to me, and I'm shutting her down after it, she got three words out, I'm shutting her down over and over and over and over and over again. She didn't look phased. That's the thing. You know, she had the, she had the strength that she believed in her authority because 99 times she's probably gone to people and says, yeah, I saw you dropping a cigarette, but give me 85 quid. And they're like, okay. And then as soon as you get one person that stands up, it doesn't really shock them because 99% of the population will follow her bullshit. If, if only two out of 10 people gave her the money and eight of them told her to fuck off, She'd be like, yeah, 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 but yeah, but the thing is, I mean, no, there'd be a different story. But she's used to. Um, it's like when you. It's like I, I watch these videos of police interactions, and uh, okay, what well, what they'll do? What, what they'll do is they'll ask for your ID. This is these American versions, though. Some of them. So the American ones, they'll ask for your ID, and the guy with the camera will be saying, uh, no, I'm not giving you my ID. I've committed no crime. You have no business stopping me or talking to me. Now go away. And they're like, uh, and they deliberately, they can't go away now because they've just been told to, to go away. So they've got to stand there. And, um, you know, and sometimes they'll be like, excuse me? Like they're, they're in a threatening sort of way, excuse me? Because they want to, they want you to say, listen, I told you to fuck off, you know. Uh, but, and, and that's what this woman was doing. She, she, was, she was within arm's reach, which is, like I say, not a good thing, but she wanted the camera she wants, she was like, you know, so even if she got punched in the face, that'd be worth it for her to get me arrested. 
and uh, she'll she'd get some compost, some work compost. She'd probably sue me as well. You know, it's it, it's, it's ideal for her. She's in a win win. I'd take a I'd take a punch in the face for a, a, a wheelbarrow full of cash. You know. Uh, anyway, but uh, but Leah, as long as you keep your cool, and as long as you're fairly polite, you've got to be stern and polite. Stop harassing me, please. Stop, uh, and then you make sure it's loud. Stop harassing me, please. I don't want to talk to you. Thank you. Goodbye. I don't want to talk to you. Stop harassing me, please. Stop harassing me. Just do that. Just that's all you got to do. You don't have to get into a conversation with her because she was trying. You know, as soon as you deviate from the plan, the plan is shut them down. Stop harassing me. Stop harassing me. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Blah, blah, blah. The same three sentences. That's all you need to do. As soon as you deviate, and they say, as soon as you start saying, well, actually, no, I, I don't believe that you have the authority because I, I'm allowed to stand here and voice. As soon as you go into that territory, you're done. All right. Because now you're elaborating. You're giving her information. You're giving her ammunition to argue back, get a confrontation going. Tempers will flare. Knuckles will fly, you know. Uh, just keep it simple. Same three, same three phrases. Anyway, I hope that was interesting for everybody. I'll do a few... Um, Shout outs and then, uh, okay. Yeah, Billy. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go to the council, I think, and ask for uh, the footage. I'll just say I want the footage. I won't ask if it was footage. It, she will have. It, I, I think I think in their, um, they're bound to. Every, I think, not just me, but I think that every interaction they have, somebody will say eventually, yeah, well, she used threatening language towards me. She was very, you know, demand, you know, and all that. So that, that she will film everything. The guy that she took the money from, as well as me, everybody, everybody she speaks to is a potential complainant especially in her line of work uh you know so um yeah so I, I, it will I'm, I'm bloody certain it will be filmed uh council right uh white man man 999 let's see uh FMC Repair Armour might be a private company, but the council has hired them to, so it would start at the council. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, she had a uniform and some badges and shit, you know. I don't know what the badges said, but uh, it could be the council. But at the very least, it would be contracted out from the council. Anybody know if I if, if I'm to take my phone? It's a uh, it's an Apple iPhone eight. Do I take that phone to the council and they download it to me? Or has anybody done this before? Or will they say, "All right, give us your email and we'll download it to your email," or uh, we'll send you a send you a, we'll, we'll put it on a compact disc and then you can take it home and do what you like with it. And uh, any idea what how that works? Uh. Billy says, probably be best to email. No, well, I don't know. I'll, I'll go in there. I'll go in there, see what's what. And if they say, send us an email, then I'll do that. I'll get the get the email details off them. Any video must be kept for 30 days and can be requested online or in person doing this. They will need your details or email. Okay, yeah, all right, great. Thank you, that's W. Hud. So I'll go up there and I'll give them my details. And uh, I'll go in person. You never know. I might see her in there having a, on a lunch break or something. <laughs> All right. Wall ready. Mark, have you... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. You'll be hunting me down. Billy, yeah, I bet it won't be given to you in any urgency. Yeah, that's what I'm... Uh, what I'm but because you are a data subject, they have to give it to you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be in no hurry. But uh, as long as I get it, yeah, it'd be, uh, be interesting to see that because, um, you know, I mean, because my recollection, I mean, it's been several hours. This was at half past three, by the way. I don't know whether I said that. Uh, so that's, you know, four hours ago. It's half, just gone half past seven now. 7.35. Uh, so, yes, yeah, four hours ago. <coughs> my, my recollection is pretty uh pr pretty clear on it i think i think i've i think i've described it very 
precisely. But uh, be inter it'd be interesting for, for me and anybody else, I think, just to you know, re-watch it if, it if I you know, get the footage and I manage to, to show it. Um, okay, let's see. I get a few comments going in. Yeah, let's see. T29 says they work on commission basis. I bet they do. I mean, 85 quid. They probably get they they get an hour they probably get you know an hourly wage, and then uh, yeah you never know I mean a fiver even I don't know but uh, but yeah I would I would imagine commission. Uh, Billy says they could just hire a full time litter picker, and it would be spotless. Indeed, they have the, I've seen the council with the orange uniform you know outfits, uh, going round with a picking stick and picking up rubbish. Uh, you know, if they just put some extra bins in there, that would help. It's crazy. That's why they carry the cameras. I mean, you tell somebody that uh, if it wasn't for the camera and you tell somebody, right, well, I'm defining you 85 quid. You imagine the uh, the ass kickings they would get if they didn't film it. You know, so yeah, I'm pretty certain they, they did. Uh, da -da, Billy. Yeah. Fleece the public. Yeah, white van man says she fancied you, Mark. <laughs> you know that's the thing. I'm, I, I honestly I don't know whether it was a it was a tick that she had, or the fact that she was trying to provoke me. But it was always at key words when I told her to go away. She said, no, I'm not going away. Like this. Um, no, I'm not harassing you. Like this. It's fucking. You know, and, and it was the tilt of the head. It wasn't like. A wink. It was like, you know, like, uh, you know, you, you know the, the movement of the head. Like this. It was... Oh, boy. Strange. Um... FMC Repair. Yeah, the PSNI in Belfast, which I've got to tell you, I, I don't know what that is. PSNI in Belfast always do this every Friday and Saturday night like to shout stop res yeah, stop resisting even though they're standing still and doing what they say <laughs> yeah I tell you what the, the, the other one I've had this um, I've had the, I can't remember if I had it with a police officer but I, I've had it with uh, people who are deliberately trying to provoke me you're, 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 you're trying to tell them a grievance and they're like, calm down, calm down. I, I yeah, I am calm. I'm trying to tell you something. And now, listen, what they say, calm down. I can't speak to you until you uh, like, fuck, yeah. and then it gets you more aggravated. It's a deliberate ploy by officers and everybody else who fucking knows what they're doing. The fact that you're speaking to them by telling them something they don't want to hear, as long as they, as long as they go, look, calm down. OK, I can't tell I can't understand what you I can't deal with what you're saying until you calm down. If you can't you calm and it fucking drives you mad. And, they, and it's a deliberate thing. So you have to watch out for that. It's a way of getting someone because the, the, what you, the immediate reaction is you don't calm down because you don't need to calm down because you're not anything other than calm down. But being told over and over, calm down, it elevates you into an, into, uh, an, an aggressive or, you know, uh, annoyed state you know <clears throat> and it's a deliberate thing so watch that t29 says uh, i'm going to shorten you it's such a long name i'm going to call you to t29 says you're very wise mark oh well thank you <laughs> thank you indeed yeah well i've been around a while you know but no i, I tell you what they uh yeah i mean the thing is i i, I, I sort of I, I i do you know i mean um uh, I seem to know a little bit of a lot of things, you know. I've had lots of interactions with lots of different people. Uh, very few of them I've liked, you know. But but yeah, I mean, I've had interaction inter inter in interactions with uh, police uh, authority figures in general, you know. But yeah, uh, you know, yeah, and you do you get to um, you get to meet a lot of people, and uh, you know, actually, I don't know whether it's because I'm getting older. I just don't put. I just don't like to be 
pushed around, especially people who don't have the authority to be doing the pushing around, you know? Anyway, uh, yeah, so thank you, T29. It says I'm very wise. Uh, FMC repair. Last time my dad done it with the police, they burned. Oh, oh last time my, oh, he's, the footage. Last time my dad done it with the police, they burned it to a DVD for him. Ah, interesting. Okay. Even if they have a charge for it, it probably, I mean, DVDs cost shit anyway. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. Because if it's on a DVD, I can, uh, yeah, I'll have to get somebody round to put it in the, oh, shit. Oh, well, I, actually, I don't, I don't, we tried to find it. I don't think my laptop has a DVD holder. I used to have a computer that did. Uh, but I can, I, I can, I can uh, actually, well, I'll, I'll take it to work. Fuck it, I'll put it on their computer and they can, uh, they can download it to my phone. Yeah, so that's good. If they put it on the DVD, that'll be, that'll be great. I'll just take it to work and get that fixed. Uh, Mad Maz, Mark, did you use that V... Mark, did you see that vegans are blocking people getting into the dairy aisles in London supermarkets? <laughs> no, I hadn't heard that. I've, I've been at work all day. I don't know what's been going on. And then, because uh, I, I usually I'll go onto the internet and find out what's been happening in the world. Stand by, I'm just going to get a, a beer. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> oh, I tell you what, though. I haven't heard of that, but it makes sense because I've been watching uh, the news footage. Uh, as, uh, you know, like I say, I watch the Fox News mostly. And I've seen footage of these these blue haired weirdos, what they'll do, they'll sit in the road and what they do, they'll block traffic. So then what you've got, so then what happens is you've got a big backlog of traffic. Some the, the guy in the first, uh, two, you know, couple of cars, they'll come out, they'll grab them and they'll drag them. And what they, their, their ploy is to just be dead weight. There's nothing worse than having to drag somebody who's just not, participating you know uh so they're just dragging the dead weight to the side of the road they turn their back get in the car and the guy's shuffling his ass across the road back into position i swear to christ i mean i i don't usually resort that's my brother's job of resorting to violence uh but if that was me i swear to christ i would lay an elbow into somebody's eye socket uh as uh, conor mcgregor would do you know a, a, an elbow into the orbital socket I'd, you know, they'd think twice about crawling in the fucking road, let me tell you. Because uh, the thing is, you run them over, you're the one going to jail. You're the one getting sued. You know, it's crazy. But I would, uh, I would, I would definitely, um, you know, make it clear that there's a, there's a boot coming their way or a knuckle sandwich or an elbow to the, uh, you know, elbow to the uh, ear. They, um, you know... Because, yeah, you know, because, I mean, these people, they've just got to be shown. So, so anybody, if that, if that happened in the supermarket, um, in fact, it's, something similar happened when I had the video shop. There was a couple of kids come in, and they were pissing them out. Um, so, of course, I go over. I want you to leave. Of course, they don't want to leave. So I grabbed one around the collar like this. And... Um, his mate was trying to get around him to get to me. So I'm using him as a shield to push the second kid backwards to, as I'm inching towards the door, all right? So so this kid can't get around. So I'm bang, you know, bang, bang. And then what he's did, he's, it's funny because his mate went outside and held the door shut while I'm banging this kid on the door, on the inside, trying to get the door open. That is what, what you need to do when you go to the supermarket. If they're blocking the aisle, you just climb over them to get to your milk. If anything happens regarding a hand on you, that's open season. You just lay in into you just lay into them. The cameras will show. Well, he he grabbed me. You saw that it's on film. He grabbed me. Uh, just climb over them. Just wait for them to uh, put their hands on you, and then it's open season. Because uh, that, that's what this kid did. As I'm uh, going him out, as I'm trying to get you know get him through the you know get him out. Uh, I, I just, you know, I just, you know, like, not really grabbed him, just 
you know, pushed me up, right, there you go, towards the door. He's like, get off of me, right, and that's it. Bang, I was on him around the collar, and that's uh, that's my uh, that's my go to, uh, you know, because he, he lashed out. And that was my, uh, that was my uh, signal that it was okay to act now. I can use, I can use force uh, because he lashed out. Anyway, yeah, so, so what I'm saying is that's what you do in the supermarket. You climb over them. Uh, but you, you, you know, and the thing is, I imagine you, if you've got a shopping trolley, what you do, <laughs> similar to what I, I've actually done this with, um, with uh, you know when you go to the shop and you've got some fucking kid you got a couple of bikes. What they do, they'll drive... You must have this. We get this all the time. They'll drive their bike right to the door, then drop their bike on the floor on the doorstep of the shop door, okay? Not on the side, right in front of the door, so you have to physically step over their bike into the shop because it's right on the shop doorway. What I'll do... I've actually done this. You know that shopping tray? You know that box on wheels? I don't know... Uh, you probably haven't seen it on the... I'll take it off, but... Uh, you, you've seen old people wear them, you know, uh, it's like a box on wheels with a handle, then you put your shopping in and you can pull it behind, you know. I'll climb over their bike and drag the box over their bike, so it's clang, 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 you know. <laughs> I've done that. Um, you know, on occasion, I've actually physically picked up their bike and I threw it into a lamppost once. Uh, sometimes I'll just take it over the bush, push it into the bush, not throw it in the bush, but just push, right, there you go. And uh, but yeah, I threw it. I I, um, I picked it up and it actually left the ground. One there was a there was a bike. I picked it up by the handle, swung it. You know the momentum. If you swing your arm, slung it across the uh, uh, the path. You know sometimes you just do that and it's uh, you know they need showing these kids. But that's what you do with the supermarket. They, I keep digressing. You climb over. You get your milk. If they put their hand on your leg, right, that's it. Open season. Uh, if you want to get your shopping trolley over. That's what I would do, just like I did with the bike. You know, you step over it and then you drag the bike, the box behind you. You do that with a trolley. You climb through the line of people sitting on the floor and then you drag the trolley over them. Uh, you pull hard enough, the trolley will bounce over their legs and uh, you'll get in. And they'll be like, yeah, but fucking hell. I said, well, listen, you sit on the floor. Being a dumb shit, that's what happens. Anyway, so the, so if you see that in your London supermarket, that's what you do. All right. And if giving you any shit, just say Mark said it was all right. <sighs> but yeah, that's what you do. You, you don't pander to these people. You don't think, oh shit, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll get the milk, to, I'll, I'll go to the local shop, I'll, just, I'll, I'll get my milk from the shop down the road. No, you, you go through them and you just drag the, tr you know. I mean, obviously if it's full of shopping, it's gonna be difficult, but, um, or uh, yeah, just get one by the hair, pull them to the side, march your trolley through the gap, give them lemonade. Yeah. Show them that there is consequences to their actions. That's what uh, does not seem to be the, uh, the message of the day, unfortunately, but, that's the way it is. There are consequences to your actions. You sit, you sit in the middle of the road, blocking traffic. You sit in the dairy aisle of the supermarket, blocking traffic. You dump your bike right on the doorstep of the shop, blocking everybody's entrance. There are consequences to your actions. Anyway, oh, uh, no, I just wish, I just hope that they try it in the supermarket that I'm in, I tell you what. I would invite people to film it, you know. Chris Butcher says, happy Fridays. Thank you very much. Uh, Repair Armar says, police service of Northern Ireland. Oh, uh, I see. P-S-N-I. Police service of Northern Ireland. What happens to just plain old police? The, the short version. Anyway, I don't know. Uh... Let's see, Basil Fawlty, Mark, have you had any more jabs? No, I haven't had any fucking jabs. I, um, what I did, they were giving jabs out at the, at the uh, homeless place down the road. Uh, like, you know, when it first kicked off, when the plague first hit, I, I wasn't going to get the plague, uh, the virus, I wasn't going to get the plague jab, but um, I figured, well, fuck it, I mean, you know, you know. So I got one. 
Okay, and then they said, right, what you need to do is come back to next uh, in two weeks and get a follow up one. Ugh. Come back in two weeks and get a follow up one. So two weeks came and went. I figured, bugger it, I'm not going to get it. And then since then, what we've had, we've had jab one, we've had the follow up jab, then we've had a booster, then we've had a second booster. Then we've got uh, the 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 the, uh, the plague took out a different strain, so then we've got a couple of couple of jabs for that. When will it end? You know, now we've got this monkey plague business. Um, fuck knows what's going on there. So, uh, but no, I, I I tell you, I figure. Well, the thing is, I'm starting to think that I have net. Oh, I say I don't want to jinx it, but I mean, you know, I could have natural uh, immunity because. I tell you what, every time, well, well I, I tell you, you, you know what, it, it, it is, I'm just not maybe answering my same, same question. The only times I ever used to get colds was when I take public transport, which I do all the time, except, you know, if I'm, you know, if I've got a bike or something. Public transport, and I always get colds eventually because you've got your filthy fuckers who'll be coughing into the air, they'll be coughing into their hand, grabbing all the bar, um, or, or coughing into the back of the hand and then it just spreads everywhere anyway. You know, I mean, follow my example, cough into your, <coughs> cough into your sleeve, right? Or if you're long sleeve, cough into your elbow or cough into your, uh, you know, into your sleeve or, or take your sleeve up, cough into that. Simple enough, you know, don't be a filthy fucker. So I always get colds, or I always used to get colds when I, uh, when I took public transport. Now the plague has hit and everybody uh, is extra conscious about coughing and choking. Before, they didn't give a shit, right? Now, they're uh, extra cautious about choking and coughing and uh, carrying on and all this. So now I never get colds. I can't remember the last time I got... Well, it, actually, actually, it was about three months ago I got a cold. I had about a week off work. Well, well less than that, you know. Um, normally, I mean, the thing is, Normally, I mean, I'll go to work on a cracked bone, right? But uh, when it comes to colds, you know, the thing is, you owe it to your uh, employer and other colleagues. I mean, there's about six of us anyway, right? But you owe it to other people not to go into... You can go into work. I've seen people come in with full-blown colds. And they give it to everybody else, you know, like a fucking inconsiderate bastard they are. So... You, d you don't go into work and give it to everybody else. You stay home and you sort of, you know, you, you know, you take it. So, but yeah, so, so being ill has happened a far lot less. Now, now that the plague has hit, I get less ill. You know, go figure. So, um, it could be the fact that nobody's coughing and choking on the buses, which means that I haven't caught it where I normally would. But I still go to the supermarkets. I still, you know, travel around doing my usual bullshit uh, at the shopping centre. Uh, you know, nothing really has changed as such. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm immune. But aside, for, aside from that one jab, and then it dawned on me afterwards, I thought, wait a minute, I'm not going back in two weeks' time to have an experimental fucking jab. Uh, and look where it's ended up. You got one jab, the follow-up jab. You got an extra booster jab, and then you got the the extra jab because it's taken a new strain. And now we've got a new, you know, no, no, screw that. Ugh. Right. Anybody, uh, if you've not hit the thumbs up and you like the talk so far, the topics, I'll uh, by all means hit the thumbs up. That'd be. Uh, so that'd be Super Smashing Grid. I can't remember, who, who used to say that? that super, Super Smashing Grid. Super, I can't remember, some comedian. Uh, all right, so that's Basil Fawlty. No, that's about the jabs. On the English lagers, I see. I don't know, it's uh, Carlsberg. Is Carlsberg English? Uh, Carling Lager, brewed in the UK. Gives consumer helpline. EU food businesses operation. There's another one. Oh, that's for Ireland. Uh, 
Anyway. Uh, oh, yeah, you know what? Yesterday. Check this out. Actually, let me... Uh, uh, I'm not sure how much of this is actually uh, top secret, but I'll uh, check that out. Can anybody make that out? Oh, hold it. Oh, Jesus, this is an awkward angle. Oh, Christ. Oh, my back. There you go. Can you see that? <laughs> that is a check from our friends at the uh, Inland Revenue, the IRS, the, uh, the HM Revenue and Customs, or the Taxman. I've got a rebate check for £402.60. There we go. Uh, that's a check for 100000 No, I wish, Basil Fawlty. No, 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 no. No, I think you're reading the uh, the bank sort code. Uh, that's pretty well. <laughs> no, um, uh, 402 pounds and 60 pence. Yeah, I tell you, I've had a rebate check before in the past for several hundred pounds. You know, it was a few years ago. But uh, but yeah, if you pay... Oh, but for, but for the year was close. Yeah, yeah, you... you... <laughs> hey. oh, see, um... Yeah, much you were close in the way that you've put six numbers and four hundred and two pounds sixty is five numbers, so it's quite yeah, close in the amount of numbers. Uh, I've, I've had uh, yeah, because what I'm what I'm doing is because remember for a, for a long time I was on the work agency, so work was pretty sp sp uh, sporadic. There you go, that's the word. Uh, so uh, and then I was taken on full time at the place that I'm at. And, hello, what's going on here? Uh, and then I got taken on full time where I'm at. So uh, I, I did a couple of months, the full hours, and then I went in and said, look, you know, because the thing is, I mean, the Christ, the place was driving me mad. And the treatment uh, from the, you know, that I was getting in the way of the, uh, you know, getting treated and the way you was trained, ugh, it was a nightmare. So I thought, right, well, listen, I can't put up with this for fucking nine hours a day. So I went in and said, look, uh, I want to be doing uh, part-time hours, which, because the thing is, because I finished my mortgage five years ago, I don't have the pain in the ass of having to go out. If I still had the mortgage, I'd have no choice. Like everybody else, you've got to go work the hours. But because my mortgage is finished, I don't have to do nine hours a day. Um... I just do uh, five, yeah, 10 till three. I do five hours. And then with the option of doing anything extra if somebody, you know, you know, has an accident or doesn't come in or whatever, you know. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, yes, yeah, so, so what's happened is I must have been paying I must have been paying too much tax when I was on the agency and also when I got taken on because I was working part-time hours. So, uh, yeah, so I got a rebate. So I shall go in the bank, I shall put that in, and I shall withdraw the same amount, and I think I shall take it in £50 notes. Yes, I do like the 50s, you know. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a few of them here. Thing is, uh, what I do, because I, I am... Uh, but people find this who have been, uh, you know, like uh, in wartime, you know, not at, not in war, but uh, in wartime when there's been shortages and whatnot. I've heard of uh, old pensioners, what they'll do, they'll, they'll store things that they don't need just in case there's another fucking, just in case the Germans invade again, you know. Uh, so, but, but what I do, because I've, because I was, I've been, you know, in the past I've been out of work. I've uh, had sporadic, sporadic work coming in. Um, being on the agency, you get fired for looking at them cross-eyed. So there's a reason for them to get rid of you. They won't fucking tell you. They just say, right, we don't want to need him in anymore. Don't send him around. You know, this, and next thing you know, you get a phone call from the agency. They don't want you to come in. Why is that? Uh, don't know. They just don't want you. So... 
it's as simple as that. And then, um, yeah, so, so what I do, and also the time when I cracked, I, I, I was working at Tesco in the warehouse on the loading bay, cracked, remember I cracked that bone in my foot. I didn't break it, it cracked, which is fucking terrible as, as itself. Cracked a bone in my foot. I went to work on it for three days because I figured, well, I can't take sick days because I'm on the agency. They're going to, you know, I, I went to use my holiday instead of going sick. Had a week off holiday, used my holidays, wanted to get the doctor to fix it. When I come back, sorry, we, we don't got any work for you, uh, you know. And of course, I'm the guy that's fucking working while all those other bastards are watching football on their, uh, on the telephone. You know, you know on, the, on the YouTube channels, on the telephone. Motherfuckers, the supervisor on the loading bay and about four other guys are watching football while me and one other guy are doing all the work, you know, and this is how they repair. Anyway, so anyway, so the, the, the point is, <laughs> point is, uh, it's the heat, the hardness, the uh, one and a half beers. Uh, so, so what I do is I like to have a surplus. So, uh, over there, I've got like a couple of hundred pounds worth of co-op stamps. You, know, you, can, you can go into the co-op, most co-ops. If they don't do it, complain to head office. All right, you go in and you can buy stamps over the counter, and you you lick them, stick them in the book. I think you lick them. yeah, you lick them. Um, but the, the size of postage stamps, I mean, don't do it, you know. But they're one pound stamps you might from the co-op. You can buy them from Tesco. You can buy them. Uh, you used to be able to buy them in Iceland. You used to be able to buy them at uh, Farm Foods, another freezer place, but they don't do that. But uh, but yeah, you put me there. I've got a couple of hundred quid's worth uh, just in case I bust my foot again, or uh, you know get beat up by that uh, ticket issuing woman, you know, that could have happened if I'd have, uh, <laughs> if I'd have made the wrong move. If I'd, if I'd have gone to rub my, rub my ear, she might have taken that wrong and give me a karate chop. You never know. That might be why she was doing it, because she knew Kung Fu. She thought, yeah, yeah, come on, you know, trying to provoke me into, uh, anyway. Uh, so, but, so what I do, I, I like to keep a, try to keep a little bit of money on hand, just in case the machine, the bank machine doesn't work or the electric goes down in the shops and they, they can't, uh, you know, they can only take cash because how long have you been, you've been in supermarkets when there's credit cards are buggered, cash only. Even the Kentucky Fried Chicken were taking cash only up the city centre. Um, I haven't been there for a while because the service is rotten in there. It's full of Africans, you know, they don't know. They, they got no get up and go. They got one speed and that's fucking reverse, you know. It's god awful services. Like, I mean, you'll be in the queue. There'll be fucking 13 people in the queue. And they're, uh, and they're just poncing around, like, yeah, okay, well, I'll do this and I'll just stroll over here. I'll grab some chips. You sound like that. When the queue gets long, that's when you fucking get up and go. You get moved, but no. That's what you get with Africans. And don't get me started. Uh, so I'll keep a bit of money on hand, uh, you know, and the saving stamps. And uh, so, that, you know, because in my mind, <laughs> I'm worried about having an injury and I'm off. Uh, not earning, so I like to keep it. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cash that in. I'll probably get, uh, I'll get a load of it out in uh, 50s. But I, I don't want to put the check in and come back a week later. I'll put the check in, withdraw some of it, a couple of hundred quid in, uh, in 50s or something. And, uh, you know. Oh, I'll tell you what, in a while, probably the next uh, live stream, I've got a jar uh, with, uh, I, I've, I used to keep counts because I, I throw him, I throw two pound coins into this jar in multiples of 100 or 200 pounds. I collect them up there in 20 pound, 20, 20 pound stacks, which is 10 coins, 10 two pound coins. So you've got 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. There's 100, 100 quid. So I'll put uh, 100 quid or 200 quid. I must have 500 quid in a, uh, in a jar. Uh, next live stream, remind me, and I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you. Uh, I'll keep that on hand just in case, you know, because you never know. I tell you, because it's... Uh, when that happens to you, when you've had injuries... Or something drastic happens that uh, you think, oh shit! You know, I wish I had something. I wish I had something to fall back on. It doesn't take too many of those for you to start thinking, right? Well, I better prepare for when the shit happens. You know, and it's, uh, it's a good thing to have any road. Right? Okay. Oh, we're up to seventeen thumbs up. There you go. Anybody not hit the thumbs up by all means. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, what we got? We are. I'll. Uh, okay. So that's my. Uh, Four hundred and two pounds sixty. 
That's the second uh, rebate check I've had from uh, from the from our pals at the Inland Revenue. Oh, no! Oh, wait a minute. I'll just I'll... Oh, over here. Okay, now. The moment you've all been waiting for, I'm sure. I've uh, got to be careful. <laughs> Nearly put my... There you go. I've got another letter from the television people. It arrived. Uh, it was in the door when I got home. It's going to... It's still unopened. but So it's going to say that you've not been replying to our constant letters. Uh, so um, we, we've given your information to the... Uh, serious investigation squad. That's what that's what they could say. They've done that. And uh, oh, are you gonna be in on the what's it now? Uh, it's coming up at the end of July. Say so, say so they're gonna say something like, "Are you gonna be in on the fourth of August?" If not, it could be either side. And if you're not in, we'll come back another day. That, which kind of why do you put a date in there in the first place? All right. So that's what it's gonna say. So I'm gonna read this out live. Okay. Okay, so. Dear legal occupier. An IN0108, anyway, code has been issued against your address. We use it to target unlicensed homes like yours that require a visit from the TV licensing enforcement officers. This letter is a formal notification that your details have been passed to our Oxford enforcement team and you could be visited at any time, day or evening, weekends or, week, or weekdays or weekends. Uh... We need to check you are not breaking the law. It is a criminal offence to watch or record live TV programmes on any channel or device or download or watch BBC programmes on iPlayer without being covered by a TV licence. Uh, and, and then the usual shit. Uh, you could face prosecution and financial penalties. If enforcement of see this is the thing. If enforcement officers find evidence of illegal TV watching, you could be interviewed under caution in accordance with the national criminal law. So, but that's if they bring a police officer with them, which they got no business doing. How the fuck are they going to find out whether you're watching the telly if you don't let them in? Now? I'll tell you what they'll do. If you're on the ground floor, they'll they'll start peeking through the windows. There's been videos on the internet, and I've actually, um, I might have mentioned this, where TV licensed people have been chased to their cars, and they've gone in and locked them fucking self in, because the owner of the house is banging on the window with a camera. Right, are you proud of yourself? You've been looking at my kids through the fucking window. The kids are running around, they're around the pants, right? And you're watching them through the window, and you're, um, how, you know, and they're, and they're like, yeah, 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 well, the thing is, you know, they lock themselves in the car because they know they're doing wrong. And they don't, you'd expect the guy in the car who's getting chased by the fucking homeowner, the dad, to phone the police. Yeah, listen, uh, but please help me, help me, help me, I'm, I'm being chased. No, they don't, because they know they've been doing something wrong. You've been looking at people's children through the window. That's what they do. And so if you're on the ground level, they'll be looking through the window. But if you're upstairs like me, then, uh, you know, you're all right. Um, you can be interviewed under caution, which is a load of shit. Uh, could lead to prosecution, right? Maximum penalty, blah blah blah, thousand pounds, right? And then, right. So that, that's basically what it says. It's slightly different to what I thought it was, because but it, but it says it's your your information has been. This letter is formally notification that your details have been passed to our Oxford, and this is all in bold, by the way. Some of it is in regular regular type. The part where I'm, about, I'm just about to read is in bold. In bold, this letter is a formal notification that your details have been passed to our Oxford enforcement team and could be you could be visited at any time, day or evening, weekdays or weekends. That's all in big black bold. So there you have it, folks. <coughs> One of a dozen letters that they've been sending me. They keep threatening me. I just ignore them. 
like somebody mentioned earlier, just put them in the bin. But I, I like to open them and read them. Sometimes, sometimes I don't bother, I just sling them. But uh, on occasion, I'll open it and just see what they've got to say. <laughs> what kind of threats are they sending me? Um, no, they don't come round. They, they, they've only ever been round, as far as I know, once. And they put a card through the door saying, we're the TV license people, we come round, you weren't in, so we'll come back another day. You know, a bit like a postman does when he when he's like taps really lightly because he, you know, and then because uh, he, you know, he just want to doesn't want to hump the uh, box upstairs. They'll put a card for your letterbox just like the postman, uh, but that's the only one. They threaten to come round. They never do. And if they do, I'm going to film them, and I'm going to uh, yeah. I'll just make it clear that they're not coming in. I'm not interested in anything you want to say. And then I'll, I'll, I'll probably even follow them down the street with a with a with a phone. Just to uh, just to harass them for a little bit, just for shits and giggles. Uh, let's see. Doctor Luthersan, what are you going to spend the money on, Mark? Well, that's the thing. There's nothing. I mean, I got I I got to buy I got buy I mean, uh, I got to buy a new bus pass in a week. So, um, oh, that reminds me, you know, I've been telling people at work that when my bus pass, my monthly bus pass, like 59 quid, it's gone up, it'll go up because I bought it just before the increase, be an extra three, four, four quid. Uh, the bus ticket, when it expires, I'm going to put it on eBay. Oh, actually, if, if anybody, um, what's my eBay, eBay name? M, oh, that's it, lowercase, M-A-D-U-R, space, or, or dash, rather, Sideway, you know, dash uh, 5611. M A D U R, lowercase, dash 5611. Yeah, I'll, I'll be joking at people at work saying, listen, I'm going to put this on eBay, see if it'll sell. I'll put it on for 50p or something, and, uh, uh, you know, postage should be about, postage should be second class, 68p. So, um, yeah, so you can, you can have a bit of bus memorabilia that was uh, used by me. Internet sensation, uh, you know, because I, I, I tell you what, though, there are people who, I mean, as strange as it sounds, I mean, I, I saw somebody today, was it, I think it was yesterday, uh, that was the last time, I've seen them every now and again, once every few months, you see them at different areas, up City Centre or down by the train station, there was a guy with a camera, fucking filming, uh, or taking photographs of buses as they're coming in, as weird as that is, uh, you know, but I mean, that sounds pretty weird, but you imagine if you, I mean, I've been to, I went to New York, when I was a teen. And of course, every kid with a camera is taking photographs of the taxis, they're taking photographs of the police cars. So to a foreigner, I don't know whether, whether these are foreigners, but I mean, to somebody who's a, you know, to a foreigner, the, the, the buses would be quite interesting. You imagine if you went to Japan, the buses would be different over there. You go to Australia, go to America, go to, uh, you know, wherever the fuck. The buses will look different. There'll be different types, different sizes, different colours. So, you know, so maybe. So uh, what I'll do, just for shits and giggles, see if I see if anybody wants to buy it. I used to have an eBay account 20 years ago. And I actually found some of those, uh, I was telling people to work about it. You, you know those Gnaw powders? You get them in a packet, right? A packet of powder. And what you do doing, you mix in with water or you mix some milk in there, mix it around. And... Uh, Oh, eBay, I've got a message on eBay from somebody. It's just flashed up there. A message from eBay. Somebody's gone to eBay and left a message. Is what I mean. Um, I'll have to have a, a read of that in a while. Um, yeah, so powder's a packet. Well, you, you, you mix in milk, say, to a cream sauce, and then you, you, know, you whisk it up, and then you pour it over your fish, and you've got a cream sauce for your, for your fish. I found some in the cupboard, right? And they were like five years out of date, right? No good to anybody. So, I, so what I did, I put them on eBay, Made it very clear to everybody this is not for human consumption. This will probably, well, it didn't say it do you harm, but uh, not for human consumption, uh, well out of date, probably be useful for somebody in the film industry, you know? And somebody bought them. Somebody did. Somebody bought the lot, you know? Because, so, yeah, I mean, anybody making a, you know, I mean, this is, so this is 20 years ago. Actually, uh, 
maybe more, maybe a bit more than that. So, uh, you know, if you're talking like, say, say 25 years ago, that would have been sort of 95-ish. Um, so if, if you're making, so, so, so that was 95 when I had them, when they were five years, you know. So, so if you're making a period drama of, uh, you know, somebody's kitchen, chick kitchen, making a show that in the 80s and you want, you want some vintage cornflakes in the background, you want some vintage Nescafe coffee jar in the background, styles of labels that they don't no longer do because they're always changing them, you know. Uh, yeah, so you know, so somebody somebody might want a vintage, you know, a uh, you know a vintage bus ticket. You know, it's, it's a it's a monthly ticket with a barcode on it. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Let's see if anybody wants to buy it. What do I know? Might might be somebody. Uh, anyway, who knows? Anyway, but everybody buys uh, everybody buys something from me. Gets one of those little red cards of mine. You know, even if they even if they don't know anything about the channel. I'll put that card in there, and they might look at it. Oh, Mark's remarks, food and uh, food cooking reviews, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah, they might might check out the channel, and uh, you know, if anybody has bought any crap from me, and they have a card, and they've gone onto the channel, by all means, you know, write a message. Let me know uh, either on the live stream or in a, on a video. Let me know, uh, you know, or if you find my ticket on the bus, you know, I jam them up under the window. In the, in the, you know, wedge them up there so people who are sitting in the chair will be thinking, oh shit, you know, there's a... I've seen people pick up the cards. They're, nobody's interested in them, but I've seen them pick them up, read it. Nah, fuckers. But uh, some people will, you know, just got to play the odds, you know. Oh boy. Get some messages coming in. Uh, thing is, on the phone, the messages come up and they stay up for about five, six seconds. Which is why down there I have the laptop, which I used to do the live streams. That's where the messages come up and they stay up so I can read them from there. Uh, right, so Luther San, uh, no, so uh, I'm probably gonna, I, I might buy something. I'm just talking shit about the bus ticket. I mean, it's, that's gonna be 60 something pounds. But anything useful. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm gonna. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'll probably find some useless shit to buy. But I'm definitely gonna store and I'm gonna put some aside for a rainy day. Uh, what do you. T29. Mark, with that money, you should buy a gigantic chicken. <laughs> yeah, I bet get a. Actually, I could be yeah, maybe a goose. They, they only they allow four. They say four chickens, but I wonder whether they are because they've got three chickens at the moment. Maybe they'll let me put a goose in there. That'd be uh, man, fatten that one up for the next. Uh, was it July now? Fatten that up for the next five months. I better stuff that in the oven. Basil Faulty, you thinking of going anywhere this year, Mark? No, no. Well, the thing is, I've travelled abroad. I've been to a bunch of places. The last one, of course, was Spain, where I did the I ran with the bulls. I ran with the bulls five times. Can you believe that? Never got injured, you know. I think I'll probably push my luck though. Uh, no, see the, see, the thing is, because it, earlier on I mentioned that uh, what I've done, because I finished the mortgage, I went to my employer and says, I want to go part-time, mainly because I, I don't need to earn as much money as before because now I don't have the mortgage. Now, the downside is, because I don't have the mortgage, I don't need to work full-time. Because I'm working part-time, of course, it brings in less revenue. While I don't need the a lot of revenue, it, I'm actually bringing in less. So that there's certain compromises that you make, you know. So I don't have the mortgage. I work less hours. I'm repeating myself quite a few times here. I think, uh, but 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 the, the the point is, because I have the luxury of doing less hours, I also earn less money, which means I can live on what I'm earning, it's just I have to do alterations slightly. I can't be having takeouts as often as I would like. 
uh, I can't be buying, a, I can't be going out and buying a car. I have to rely on the buses. I can't, um, can't be going abroad on holidays and spending, uh, you know, hundreds or even thousands of pounds going abroad. I mean, I could. I mean, the thing is, it would take me a while to save up. Um, I mean, like th th this, this four hundred pounds would go a long way to having spending a week in Spain and running with the bulls, for example. You know. But at the end of the day, after I've spent all that money, what have I got to show for it? I've got the memory. I've got the memories of running with the bulls. I've got that. I've actually got myself on video as well. Um, although I'm, 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 there's 500 people in the street, but we can make me and my brother out. My brother and I, rather. Not me and my brother. My brother and I. We can make us out because of the distinctive T-shirts we're wearing. I have those memories. If I was to go and do that again, I'd be spending money that I can ill, you know, ill afford to just throw out, you know. Uh, at my age, I mean, I'm 52 now. Now I'm looking to be comfortable. I've worked myself to death for the last 30 years, paying 25 years, paying the mortgage. All right, I took my mortgage out in '91. Add 25. Um, which is, what's that, uh, 90, well, fuck me, what's 90, 90, 100, 100 I don't know, she is great. I can't even think, I can't even do basic math. It's so hot. And a few beers. All right, 1991, somebody worked it out. 1991, I took out the mortgage. 25 years, when that finished, when that came up, the 25 years, I had to extend it because I had two grand I still owed, um, which is approximately five years ago when I finished, so. So we worked it out. I can't be. Uh, I can't even think straight. Uh, so yeah. So now I'm looking to. I, I've done the hard work. I've done the thirty year, twenty five plus years, paying the mortgage, working in jobs I don't like, working with people that fucking drive me crazy, because you have to. I've worked when I've been ill. I've worked when my you know I've been bone you know you damage to your bone. I've worked through injuries because I had to. Now, I don't gotta do shit. I go in, I do the bare minimum amount of hours. I fucking work hard while I'm there. Harder than the other motherfuckers that were running around there. But I do the minimum amount of hours and now I'm just looking to be comfortable, you know? Uh, I want more free time than the amount of time that I, when I've got work and free time, I want more free time. I wanna be able to go to the allotment after work uh, you know, run around with the chickens and um, do whatever else I'll do over there after work while it's light. I want to be able to go to the shopping center. I want to be able to go around and go to the shops while they're still open, you know. Uh, I don't want to have to choose, a, you know, you know, because say you're working through till six o'clock in the evening, right? Take you 45 minutes to get from work, you've got to get two buses, 45 minutes just to get to the shopping center. Now we're talking quarter to seven. Everywhere shut. So you've got to make a special day to go shopping. You want to buy a pair of socks, you've got to make a special day while the shops are open. I could just go any day of the week, you know, any day of the week, finish at three, get the shopping center about, you know, quarter to four, do what the hell I want. Uh, and that's what I'm looking at. So anyway, I can't, I've got onto that tangent and I can't remember how I uh, got onto it. Am I, am I going anywhere this year? I think it was a year. No, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, uh, but by not going on holiday, I've got money to live a comfortable life. I mean, don't go, I mean, I've had some, uh, I mean, I don't want to go into, uh, you know, talk about my hardships as much, but when I was out of work, I was out of work for a while and I swear to Christ, it's fucking depressing, you know, reliving what it was like, but having to go to the shop and deciding between a loaf of bread and a chocolate bar, you know, that is, I don't want to get onto that too much because it'll, it'll, it'll fucking depress me much, you know, but but th th that, that, that's what I've gone through, you know, you go in and y you've got two items, whatever. I, I would. I haven't had a chocolate bar in three months. Uh, it'd be really great, but this loaf of bread is, you know, two three days worth of eating. You know, it's just. 
So, so that's why I stockpile a little bit of cash, all those stickers, all those co-op uh, vouchers, those stamps. So, um, so no, I, I won't be going on holiday. I'll be, I'll, I'll be put, I might buy something nice, but I'll be saving some for the next time that I have an injury. I mean, let's face it, I mean, if I'm 52 years old. Um, if I'm going to have any injuries, I'm going to have them now as opposed to years ago when I was young and fit, you know. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, like when, I, when I cracked the bone in my foot on the loading bay, I didn't even realise I'd done it. I actually thought it was sprained for a while. It turned out to be cracked. Well, as soon as I went to the doctor, the doctor said, oh, yeah, that's cracked. He had a look at it. You could tell straight off. Um, it, it, these things happen, and you don't know when they're coming. You know? I hit myself in... That time I told you about when I hit myself in the face with a bar, you know, um, it was one of those trolleys with, with, with a handle with a handle on it it's just like a you know but imagine a you know it's a, it's a trolley and it was so light probably weighed about five six kilos you could actually pick it up by the handle and carry it down the stairs you know and what i did once i picked it up by the handle the body fell and of course i'm holding six kilos like this and the body fell and bang that's what happens you know if um imagine if you're holding a box and suddenly the tv falls out the bottom it's like you're straining it's like oh you, you, your arms go up. So I hit myself in the, uh, I was wearing my glasses, the glasses uh, hit myself in the face, in, you know, they cut across my nose right there. It happens at any time. I chip my tooth. Uh, ah. Oh, thank you. Right, thank you. Basil Fawlty has donated five pounds. That is very generous. Thank you ever so much. Basil Fawlty. I'm a big fan of Fawlty Towers, by the way. Not the American. You know the Americans made of, made of Fawlty Towers? Ugh. I shit you not, it is crap. Just well, just like their uh, their other TV shows that they rip off from us. But um, yeah, Faulty Towers, uh, the American version. No, but anyway, Basil Faulty, thank you very much for the five pounds. That's very generous. And uh, he goes on to write: What was the most you bench pressed when you were in your weight train? Weight when when you were into your weight training. Uh. <clears throat> Actually, that is quite, I can't, let us see. I know, uh, let me see, I'm trying to go through the machines. There's a leg press where you're, you're sitting in a chair and you're uh, sort of like inclined backwards and your legs pushing, uh, there's a big, a big board and your legs are pushing up. Let's see. 60 to 80 on each side, so it's 120 to 100, uh, 120 to 160 on each side, uh, uh, combined rather, 60 to 80 on each side, so double that, as, yeah, so, so yeah, so I'm pushing 120 with my two legs, bench, uh, let me see, I'm trying to think, uh, when I was doing curls, curls are when you've got a, bar, a barbell in each hand, I would start off with the, the light ones. I would go up. So I'm, I'm digressing, but I'm actually going through the, in my head and going through the motions of the different barbell curls. Possibly f 10, um, comfortably with 10 on each, 10 kilos on each hand. And then when I really wanted to hammer the biceps, I would do curls with like 15, 15 on each arm, 15 kilos. Uh, work in the side delts where you would have a dumbbell in each hand and you would bring them up and down, bring them up and you'd hold it there, you know, you'd, you'd bring them up. When he got really, you, you'd do that with about, about 10, 10 kilos. I could do it with 15 if, you, if you're holding on to a, a piece of machinery, say with your right hand and you're lifting, you know, but, but basically it works the side delts. That's, that's called the side delts, and you've got the trapeziums. If, if, you, if you look at a bodybuilder, when he's got his back turned, the, 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 across the back and down, it meets at the bottom of the spine or halfway down the back. It's like an upside-down triangle. They're called the trapeziums. And the side delts, that's what it does. So 10 kilos in each hand or holding on to something, and then I'll do 15. But you need to be holding on to... Uh, and then the bench press... Uh, it would vary. It would vary. 
because if I wasn't in an inclined chair with a dumbbell in each hand, I would bench press I don't know, uh, 20 to 25 in each hand, but then you've got the option, which is a very safe thing to do. If you got the option, if, 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 you, if, you, if you get fatigued and you're all fucked up, anything happens, you can just drop them. Whereas you, if, you're, if you're using a barbell with the weights on each end and you're doing the thing, if, if, you, if you crap out and you, 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 you lose your strength, you lose your grip, you, you, fucking, you wanna sneeze or something, the bar cup. It's like when you see on, on TV shows. If anybody's going to have an injury on the fucking um, weight training, it's when they're on the bench press and the bar comes down and then it's across their chest, across their neck, and they're like, ah, fucking hell. You need a guy there with dumbbells, one in each hand, you can just drop them. So, dumbbell in each hand, 20 to 25, but remember, the higher the weight, you do less reps. So, with, uh, say, a 20 kilo dumbbell, I might do five reps. Whereas I drop it down to 10 kilos, I might do 10, 15 reps. You know, so the lower the weight, the higher the reps. You bring the weight up, but you do less reps. So, uh, so dumbbell, 20. And if I really wanted to hammer her in the chest again, maybe 25, but I do low reps, three to five. Very low. Uh, if I use the machine, uh, possibly 40, 50 perhaps, but that's a machine and you need to concentrate on using the same strength on each arm because you could do it with one arm, you know, but it's, uh, it comes from behind you and then it goes out. So if you're not careful, you're going to keep him straight. Uh, I, I never used to like using the barbell and I, I have done, but if you, you just ask him for an injury, if something happens, it comes down on you. So, um, but yeah, you know, different weights for different techniques, for different body parts. Um, yeah, quite often, quite often, uh, I, if I did a very light weight, say even five kilos, I've done a bench press with five kilos in each hand, which is girly weights, warm-up weights. Do those, but you, you squeeze the chest. You act as if you're pushing 20 kilos in each hand. You push because you squeeze the chest, the, especially on the angle where you hit the upper pegs if you're on an incline. If you're flat on the back, it will cover the whole chest. If you're inclined slightly by, say, say you're, you're sitting in a deck chair, you know how inclined, uh, but you'd be a bit, you know, leaning back. I'm waffling on. Uh, yeah, so, so I would go, so, so I'd go for, you know, uh, I, I would do like five kilos in each hand, but I'd do like 20 or 30 reps, whereas then on an increase, I'd go up to sort of, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25 kilos in each hand, but do three to five reps on the super heavy weight. That's how that all works. So, uh, yeah, it's just, but yeah, I, I miss those days, you know. I mean, I do some lifting at work, you know. Um, of, of course, I'm, I'm humping uh, boxes ranging from, you know, six to 26 kilos. And, uh, and of course, you, you, you're piling them up on stacks that are higher than your head. I've actually, funny enough, I did it today, sometimes just to wind up the kids. I, I say kids, we, we got a couple of 20 something year olds. Uh, we've got a few of them running around. What I do, I'll get what well, I'll get a, a, a copy machine or a, 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 what were they called? No, copy machines, uh, you know, like these printer machines. They'll weigh 25, 26 kilos. It says on the box sometimes at 25, 26. And uh, we put four on a layer, five layers. So that's 20 on a pallet. And it's above your head when you have to sort of uh, hump it up and then on to the. What I do, I do, I do it sometimes. I did it today. I'll pick up one. And I'll be like this. I'll be bench uh, up above my head. I'll be doing this. I'll be like, right, I challenge the lot of you. <laughs> and I'll be doing eight or ten of these. You know, and I'll say, right, anybody? Anybody want to challenge me? Oh, come on. I want, I like this. Uh, you know, I want to, with a 25 kilo fucking machine. Just to, just to wind them up. You know, say, listen, if I, you know. But nobody ever challenges me. But, but, but that's what I do, just to wind them up. And, uh, yeah, it's a good bit of, good bit of exercise, you know. It's uh, it's good. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that's that. That's what I used to do on the on the. Uh... On the ticket, uh, on the on the uh, the bench press. Okay, what we got here? 
Hello? It says there, on my screen, five pound and one penny. That's uh, strange. But, um, yeah. Anyway, that's what I did on the bench press and uh, weight training days. And uh, that that's the, the, the one advantage of the, this job as well, you know. it's uh, There's some heavy lifting, which can be a drag sometimes, but it keeps the guns in condition. Uh, gets the you know keeps the chest and the shoulders uh, you know working. All right. Uh, yeah. So Basil Fawlty, thank you again for that. That's very good. If anybody, if anybody wants to help the channel, uh, the, the, you don't have to be as generous as Basil Fawlty over here. Although it is very nice when people do that. It's very appreciated. If you want to help the channel. Because uh, I'm not one of these, you know, like, so, oh, some of these, some some people I watch on the thing, they've they got like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of clicks on every video, and they're still asking you to contribute, you know, on Patreon. You know, it's like, fucking nerve. What I do, I mean, if, if that is very nice. Thank you to Bezel Fawlty. But if anybody wants to help without going that far, you, you've always got the option. What I always say to people is just, just let the ads play, you know? Uh, I, I don't, what I do, <clears throat> on my videos, uh, in the early days, I didn't know what I was doing, but in the latter part of uh, making videos, what I do is I click yes to the videos to allow these to be shown, but I, I don't, I deliberately don't click on the, because you've got the option of, click uh, uh, uh well, you know click clickable videos and unclickable but well, what what it is it's those ones where you have the option as a viewer to click off no i don't want to watch that fucking advert click off and go straight to the video uh i only I, I allow the clickable ones i don't i don't show the ones that cannot be clicked off I'm losing revenue by doing it, but uh, it, it just allows you, the viewer, to have the option. Yes, I'd like to help out Mark and just let the video play. Or if I don't, I've got the option to click it off. You know, what I, what I don't like is for the to have to force people to sit through a video, uh, sit through an advert just to get to my video. So I, I, I uh, that's, that's what I do. I like to say I earn less money doing that way, but it saves, you know, people getting them. You know, pain in the ass for uh, you know watching because then you know I don't like to f I don't want to force them to watch something that they anyway. So uh, so so yeah, that, that's a way that you can help anybody. Anybody can help doing that just by letting the ads play. Uh... Barry Barry, why don't you get a pish bike? <laughs> a pish bike, um, Mark, and save buying a bus ticket. Well, that's the thing. If I was to. Um buy a buy a pish bike um thing is I would, I would have to cycle from here it would take shit i would imagine 45 minutes i'm just i'm just you know going on the route that would have to go i'd have to go all over hell up this way down that way Ugh, it would um get lost on the redways and stuff yeah i, I would imagine 45 minutes so, uh, and I, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to be cycling for 45 minutes anywhere, you know. So, uh, so, so yeah. But besides, if I, if I get the, if I get a, uh, you know, if I get a bus ticket, I can use the bus ticket any time. I mean, I need two buses there, two back. Uh, that's if I just go straight to work, straight home. If I want to stop off and do, get some shopping, uh, I, I've got that option. It's unlimited use on the, uh, on the, on the bus, uh, bus ticket, you know. I think it should be the amount of charge, but uh, yeah, it's unlimited use. So, so, so it's not bad. I mean, sixty at the moment it's fifty nine pounds, but it's gone up about three or four quid. So, but it, even if it was sixty quid, which it'd be more, it would be sixty three, sixty four by now because I bought it just before it raised. But uh, at sixty quid for thirty days, that's two pound a day. You know, uh, if I go to work and back, that's four trips. That's fifty pence a trip. If I go shopping, stop off, go somewhere, then catch a bus, a second bus home, <clears throat> it's even less. But even if I only use it for work and back, that's 50p, uh, 50p a trip. Yeah. Besides, it's a whole lot cheaper than buying a, running a car. 
and it's less awkward, you know, than bike. I mean, because remember, because you've got a bike, I mean, I'm guessing at 45 minutes, uh, then you've got to do that in the heat or the rain. You know, it's just not on. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. He corrected himself underneath my push bike. Uh, all right. So, yeah. Yeah, so if anybody doesn't want to, you know, throw in like that, you've you got to just, just do the, do, do the uh, uh, commercials. You know, like, like, like you know, on the, on, the, on here, all the regular videos. It's all, it, 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 they don't pay bugger all, but it, it adds up. And, yeah, I, I don't really like having to flog the Patreon thing. I know like, a lot of, lot of subscribers do sub you know contribute to my patreon channel to allow us to make more videos and uh dear you know, i don't yeah and they're the ones that don't need it because they got fucking thirty thousand subscribers they got you know thousands upon thousands of clicks every video anyway i'm watching it on because i'm tired and i'm drunk Oh, I see the thumbs up haven't moved for a while. Anybody not hit the thumbs up, by all means, go ahead. It all adds, it's all good. Okay. T29. Uh, yeah, uh, bench is when you're lying down, bar over your head. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the bench press is... Uh, I haven't got anything that will really demonstrate you. Yeah, I've... Uh, I haven't really got anything that resembles, but uh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. The the, the bench press. Y you imagine, um, yeah, the bench press. You can either lay down on your back flat on the bench press, and then you've got the weight. Uh, you, you imagine if uh, if I'm in this position, but I'm on my back then I'm pushing the weight up. If I, if I do it on a flat bench, then all the, all the pressure will be going on the upper, middle, and lower pecs, pectoral muscles. Um, if I'm, instead of being flat, if I am, my, my, my head's been up here, if my head is, a bit like being in a deck chair and you're leaning back, if you're if you're if you're leaning up slightly and doing the same thing, then your arms are straight in the air, going straight up towards the ceiling, but your body is leaned upwards slightly, like you're in a deck chair. So what it does, it it it, it transfers the uh, pressure to the uh, upper be upper pecs, which is where you know when people say I can I can do it slightly actually you know, I can still do it now I used to be able to do it then really well you can flex the pecs I don't know whether you can see that but it's it's you know not near as what I used to be able to do but um, but yes so the and then if you're bolt upright like I am now and then you have uh, going straight up that that'll sort of hit the pecs a little bit but it'd be more like in the shoulders the side delts over here. Uh, a little bit of pecs, uh, yeah, upper pecs, side delts, which is your right here. That's a side delt, rear delt, front delt. Uh, you bolt upright, that'll hit those. When you're leaning back, but your arms are still, tr you know, straight to the ceiling, it'll hit the upper pecs. When you lean backwards and you, you have your arms straight toward the ceiling, the pecs will be hit lower down. Anyway, so, so, so that's what the, uh, so uh, what, what I used to do was to use what was called a Roman, uh, not a Roman chair, Roman chair was for sit-ups. Uh, use a, a, a chair that was designed to incline at various, um, so it's like a, you know, like you're sitting in a chair and the, the back, you would just alter it so it clicks down, clicks down, it goes, you know, it'll go anything from bolt upright to all the way laying flat and anywhere in between depending on uh, where is it you wanted to hit the... Anyway, so you can do that in the chair. Uh, yeah, you know, so, but yeah, you're right. So the bench press is when you're, you're flat. Um, there's nothing wrong with the, the laying flat on the bench press, but you've got to remember that you'll be hitting a little bit of everything in the chest. Whereas if you want big bulging uh, uh, petrol muscles, 
you you want to be targeting the you know the the upper. Still do the rest, but target the upper. <clears throat> All right, Basil Fawlty. Yeah, the bench bar can be dangerous. Yeah, yeah, especially when you don't have someone spotting you. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I've actually had that, you know, because the thing is, the, 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 the trick with uh, training and hammering your muscles is we, we, you do what we used to uh, do as uh, what we used to call something not similar. I can't remember exactly the wording. Uh, um... You, you, you work until, uh, you, you know, you, you... I can't remember what the word is now, I'm drunk. Um, until, well, basically, until you collapse. I've done that, you know. Uh, w w that's why I always say, if you have... I, that's the one bit of advice I got when I remember from when I was training. I always, always sticks with me. The guy said, work with the dumbbells because you're working, working, working. You reach the absolute maximum that you can do and then you do one more and you're totally fucked. You can't do anything. Basically, all you can do is bring the weight down. That's the only, you don't have it anymore to bring it up. You've got nothing. Then what you do, you've got a bar across your throat and you don't have anything to lift it up because you're totally fatigued out. With a dumb, with the barbells, just, you can drop them. Oh, you know, but you're right. That's where people get into trouble. Because that's what, because if you, if you work, if you're doing the bench press, you've got a bar across the barbell. If you're bench pressing and you have the energy to push it up and put it onto those hooks that the, you know, the, the, those uh, poles that are behind you to hook them on. If you have that energy to push it up and do that, you have the energy to do another three more reps. And that's three reps that you've just wasted. So, um, so so if you if you bench press till till you fail and you absolutely it's down here and you have nothing to push it upwards you've got nothing left the that you just put it on the ground and then you've gone the maximum you can go uh like i say you know if you've got the energy to push it up and put it onto the hooks you've got three more reps in you which you've you you haven't put into those pegs or those shoulders so uh, it's a way of getting the maximum out of your work, your work, uh, you, you, your work, um, work out. You know, you, you work until you fail. And the, the, the time I've done that plenty of times, you work until you have nothing. Not you work out until you're tired and oh, I'll give it a rest. I'll just put the uh, put the barbell back on the uh, on this platform on this little hook there. No, if you <laughs> that's not working to fail and that's not giving your muscles the best workout possible. And that's the difference you make. I mean, that that that, that photograph I've shown on the, uh, you know, that's the only one I've got. I intended to do a whole sequence. Uh, I show, you know, on occasion when the subject comes up, I'll, uh, you know, people have seen that. And um, they look at it and think, well, fuck me. You know, it's just like, you know, you, you're putting the work for that. And that's the way you do it. You know, you you, you push. You, 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 you don't want to do it. You think, oh, fuck. No, I, I haven't got any more in me. And that's why you have somebody there saying, right, you motherfucker, you've right, you got two more two more fucking reps to do. Do it, you know? You need somebody to push you. And if you had that barbell across, you need somebody there too. Because when you when you failed and you do not have it enough to bring it up, it's going to just land on your chest. You, How many movies have you watched where there's somebody in the gym, even a prison gym, a workout, a, pro, a regular gym, they're working with the thing and it comes down on them? And then they're, they're fucked because they got it across their chest. Uh, yeah, it's just not... I mean, don't get me wrong. It has its purposes. It's, it's, it's fine as long as you have somebody there. And as long as you know what the dangers are, you, gotta, you, know, you can plan not to do that. I'm just looking. Uh, it's, a, it's 130... Uh, there can't be one hour. No, it's not one hour, 38 minutes. It's 138 minutes. Yeah. That's how long I've been going for. Blimey. Got a small... Actually, that's the thing. During the live, I, I usually have a small audience. Sometimes more than now, but... Uh, but it's, I tell you, my live streams, they get so much traffic on the reruns. You know, it's amazing. It, it, they, they outstrip uh, all my... All the other videos... You know, it's, it's uh, unbelievable how, uh, how popular how popular the live streams are. Just me talking shit for a few hours about everything from yeah. I, I tell you, it's been interesting today, talking about that 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 bloody woman with the uh, litter fine, 
to weight training, to could be anything, could be space aliens, could be any, you know. All right, so um, over your head, yeah, that's T29. Basil Fawlty, yeah, the bench press can be dangerous, especially when you don't have anyone spotting. I think I've just read that one. Yeah, yeah, it's always best to have somebody there. And if you don't, just use dumbbells, because like I say, you get into trouble, bang, they're gone. You know, but yeah, but fuck the carpet, fuck the, you know, they, 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 a lot of gyms have rubber mats anyway, specifically for when people get, you know, they drop the weights. You shouldn't really drop the weights. It's not on, it's not, you know, it's not protocol, but if you're in trouble, you know, we can, you, you, that's what you got to do. T29 says, you're quite a knowledgeable, Mark. <laughs> oh. Um, you thought of doing personal training, people would like you. Well, well, that's the thing. Thank you very much for the compliment. But the thing is, I mean, I, I remember a lot. I mean, I could I could go through all the names of the muscles because I, I read, I, I, I bought books. I, I was interested in every name of the muscles, uh, different, you know, all that stuff. I, I can remember, I mean, I, I've probably forgotten half the stuff that I used to do and remember back then. I remember I was 25 then. That was 25, 27 years ago. Uh, yeah, all the stuff I knew then, I probably know half of it now, although I can remember quite a lot of it, and I'm pretty, you know, like in that respect, I'm knowledgeable. I don't have the knowledge you 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 know to to be a trainer. I don't think because um, you see back then I was I, I was getting advice off of other people who trained. You know that's the best advice you can get if you find somebody who looks like they've done it. Ask them how they've done it. Don't ask a fucking guy that weighs twelve stone that doesn't uh, do bugger all. Look at a guy and fight, you know, what do you do? Because I used to go in there all the time, you know, uh, I used to go to the uh, different people and say, listen, um, I'm thinking of working the triceps uh, today. You, what do you do for the triceps? And they're like, ah, OK, well, what do you do? You, 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 there's, a, there's a machine with a bar. Uh, it, it, it's like a, imagine a flat bar that's been bent into a V upside down. You've got that, you pull them down, you, you've, got your, you've got your weights up here, uh, you know, behind your head. You fight, ask people who've done it. And, but, but I don't have that, you know. I mean, I've, I've done it then. And I, everything I did, sometimes trial and error. Sometimes uh, I would find an exercise that people did. Sometimes it worked for me. Sometimes it didn't work for me because I'm different than that person. I don't have the knowledge to teach somebody else how to do it. I mean, I can... I, when, it, when it comes to weight training, I'm pretty sure that I could... I couldn't, lift, I couldn't do the weights that I did then. But I could do the lightweights and I could impart my knowledge onto somebody in the gym who I was regularly, say, spotting, for example. I could help them out with a no end of knowledge about what, you know, this will help this, this will work this, this will do, you know. I mean, I, you know, different things that I've, uh, anyway, I, I could help a kid, but I couldn't get paid for it. Nobody would give me any money for it. And uh, I, I, would, I wouldn't be qualified, I don't believe. But I'm only qualified in the way that I've done it and passing on my knowledge. I don't have the uh, qualifications as such. Um, but interesting, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, if, 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 I was, if, if there was a kid who uh, wanted to, you know, put on muscle and gain weight, I could, I could work with them and show them how it's done without getting, uh, without getting fucked up and injured, which is, uh, which is fairly easy to do. You know, th th that's why, that's why posture... You know, I actually, when I'm at the bus stop, I actually, you know, you, you start, you, you're waiting on your bus and you're looking at people. I actually notice, because it's something that I was having to focus on for a while, I actually notice when people have very good posture and you can look at them, ah, that guy lifts weights. Okay. I, I worked with a woman. <clears throat> uh, she, she works in a canteen and she was very slim and she would float across the floor, <laughs> almost float across the room. And I said to her, have you ever done, sw you've definitely worked out. You, do, do you do swimming? Because the way you carry, ah, uh, no. What I used to do was ballet, she used to do ballet. That, that's why her posture was like it was and she used to glide. Uh, I've never known a ballerina, but I, I, but I have done swimming and I've seen swimmers. So I equated it to somebody who swam. 
but in actual fact, she was a ballerina. But the, the idea, but my, you know, the first guest was there. She was somebody who knows how to hold herself. She's, she's, um, but yeah, you notice these things, you know, <clears throat> if somebody works out or uh, you can tell by their posture, because normally, uh, normally it's better posture than most people. Uh, okay. Let's see, who, who we got there, uh, sir, spotting you, uh, thought to do personal, yeah, so personal training, no, I, I haven't got the qualifications, while, but I could show somebody how to train and get muscle, because I've done it, I couldn't train them to do much anything else. Uh, David Schnapps, David Schnapps, I went to Austria when I was a kid, and uh, people were drinking Schnapps, I was too young then, but, uh, yeah, is that your real name or is that uh, something you've, you know? But uh, David Schnapps, like like the drink, says hi, Mark. Looking really sharp today. Hope you have a good. Uh, hope you had a good day. Well, if you want to know how my day was, look on the reruns at the very start of the uh, <laughs> at the very start of this live stream. Yeah, you'll find out what a day I had. My God. Yeah, go from sort of like five minutes in up to about 35 minutes. I was talking about the day that I've had. It was, it was uh, quite interesting, you know. Anyway, so David Schnapps, thank you for that. Uh, what's it? It's five to nine. Oh, what time did I start the live stream? Oh, it was 6.30, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 6.30 because I said I would come on live 6 or 6.30. So two and a half hours. Uh, 60, 120s, uh, 50. Yeah, 146 minutes, which is four minutes short of two and a half hours. Four minutes short of two and a half hours. Yeah, so it's about right, 6.30. Yeah, because it's four minutes to nine now. Okay, what we got? Oh, somebody else is, uh, yeah, so, yeah, hit the thumbs up if you haven't done so already. That's all excellent. And, uh... And yeah, just a reminder if you, you know, uh, yeah, watch the, let the ads play. That'll, that'll help. Um, oh, I'm, I tried to get that message that was up there. It comes up for like five seconds and then it comes down here. Uh, David Schnapps. <laughs> if your mate came out as gay... Would you still be friends with him? Well, that's the thing. I'm not particularly thrilled with the lifestyle. And... I don't like the flamboyantness of the, the Mardi Gras floats they have. And anybody else who acts super... Puffy. Um, but it's, it's, it's like a lot of things, you know... Uh, no, if I had a mate who, who came out as uh, gay, as long, as long as, uh, <laughs> how do I remember, as long as I'm not on the menu, okay, and uh, as long as I don't see or hear about any of the shenanigans, I think I could, uh, you know, because I mean, half the problem is actually looking at it, you know? Looking at the, uh, I mean, I, I see it around, but when I'm around, especially with the younger generation, they look feminine anyway. All these uh, eight, 17, 18 year old males, uh, they're super thin arms, they're, uh, you know, they just look like a bunch of fairies, right? There's no meat on them and they just act feminine. That I don't like. I don't like being around that. It makes me, you know, and then the super gayness of, uh, oh, announcing to everybody or you know the, yeah i like to fuck men you know what, what do you think about that no i just don't want to hear it you know uh no if they if you want to do it just keep it quiet don't bring it around me and uh so yeah you know i'm I, you know i mean I, I i i uh i must seem like a pretty the opposite to tolerant it it, it, it intolerant no, uh, the, the opposite of tolerant. I must seem like one of those, but you know, I'm not, not so much really. I mean, I put up with a lot of shit. Um, but there's certain things that, um, 
I, I don't like being around. I don't like the transsexuals, the transgender. I don't like seeing men running around the street fucking wearing high heel boots and socks stuffed down their bras. Basically trying to palm themselves off as a woman, which honestly, if, you know, I mean, th 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 there are, there will be some who will be convincing because the, you've got some sort of pretty looking men, I guess, who would pass themselves off as women quite successfully, but it's the ones who don't. It's the, uh, oh God, it's, it's such a, you know, you're walking down the street and they, you know, they just look really rough. <laughs> it's fucking, you know, I don't like to see that. Uh, really sharp. Yeah, so, I'll tell you what though, what is it now? Oh, we got, oh, oh, blimey. 150 minutes. 60, 120, 30, 40, 50. It's exactly two and a half hours. Man, my back is aching a bit. All right, yeah, well, I've, I've told, I've, uh, oh, I've gone through everything, I think. Let's see. Yeah, if, if anybody's joining the, um, joining the thing. Uh, and then, uh. You know, if they if they're just joining, you missed some uh, some good stuff at the beginning. Uh, I I met uh, had a run in with the 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 person who dishes tickets out for people who were littering, and uh, talked about my uh, TV license thing. Another threatening letter. I got a rebate from uh, our buddies down at the uh, tax people, and. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, T29. Is there a Mrs. Remarks? No, no, there's no no wife. Mad Maz, Mark, would you ever get one of those African nose piercings? That's the thing. Oh, that's the other thing I don't like. When I see men... I mean, I'm 52, so, we, we, you know, when you see people, men my age and older with an earring, oh, I don't like that at all. It just disturbs me. <laughs> you know, I feel like tapping them on the shoulder. I see them on the bus, you know, and it's, it's like, you know, it's like, ugh. I feel like saying to them, what are you thinking? You know, just grow the, f you know, but no. Um... So no, you know, I, uh, I, I actually it reminds me of that story on one of my live streams. You remember, people, the regular people might remember, I was on the bus at the bus station and this black woman got on and uh, she, she, she had a suitcase, she, she wanted, uh, well it was, she had, a, she had a suitcase, she had one of those nasal things where you inhale, clears your nostrils and inhale your money. Rather than, she was juggling all these things and rather than put the uh, thing in her pocket, and tell the two hands that she, she jammed this uh, Vicks nasal spray up her nose to, to have two hands to count the, uh, imagine that. So uh, yeah, it looked really strange. And then I, I mentioned on the uh, the video, the live stream that it likened, it reminded me of those Africans with a bone through their nose. So, uh, Mad Maz, no, I would never have one of those African piercings. I would never have any piercings at all. I don't like to see men with earrings. It's just effeminate. Uh, I would never get a nose piercing or any other place pierced. Especially ear. Nose. I don't like nose piercings. There's some, even when you've got the, the you know, this, this on this side of the nose, even the ones that are in the middle, like, a, like you know, like cows have those rings in the nose. Uh... And then you've got the ones where they go up and they go all the way around the ear, you know, all the way from the top, all the way down. Oh, those ones, oh, you ever see those? I see them now and again. You know the ones, what they do is they make a hole in your ear and then they put a, a hollow thing in there so it keeps the hole open, you know, about the size of a five pence, you know. And then they'll go back and then they'll open it some more and they'll jam another thing in there to keep the hole open. Next thing you know, they've got a fucking hole that big in their earlobe which you know is never going to heal up, you know? So they're, so they're buggered. I hate to see that. Yeah, piercings are down. Nose piercings are the worst, well, aside from the big hole in the ear. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not a big fan of facial facial piercings. I've, I've seen people with piercings in their side of their face, you know, in, in their eyes, over here, eyebrows over here. Now, just not my thing. I don't like to see it, and I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, oh, of course, those those African Johnnies, what they're doing. They, remember, you've seen some of the big plates in their lip. Man, how the fuck are they going to... Imagine trying to get that out and trying to get that to heal up. You know, that big saucer in their, in their upper, lower lip. Yeah, that's not going to heal. So, uh, no, it's just, uh, no, it's just not my thing. David Schnapps, have you ever been with a black girl, Mark? Yes, I have. Yeah. Um... Two, in fact. I mean, I, I, you know, there was one I, I just made out with her once. Um, that, was, that was when I was young. Um, but years later, yeah, I had a, what we might call a, well, not really a relationship, really. We just, you know, she'd come around and sort of, what do you call me? You know, you know uh, come around so I could tap that booty. Uh, yeah, it, it, it wasn't, I mean, it was kind of, you know, it, it lasted about, I don't know, a year or so. But, but yeah, uh, you know, it was okay. You know, she, um, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, that didn't last long. But, but yeah, I've got nothing against dating black women, I guess. Not the real chunky ones, you know, I mean, the ones that sort of like, you know, do something. You know, yeah, a, a bit, of, bit of meat on a woman's fine, but when you got those, uh, you know, those, you know, Anyway, but yeah, she was fine. I, you know, I've got nothing against uh, against that. T29, put some emojis in. Uh, what, what is that? Is a, a halo, a saint, a devil? Anyway. All right. Uh, okay. I guess uh, we'll be at looking at. We've got a few people watching. Lots of thumbs up. Yeah, hit the thumbs up if anybody. Anybody wants to? I'm going to go, I think, because I've been there for, shoot, what was it, three and a half hours? Two, no, two and a half hours. 60, 120, 30, 40, 50, two and a half hours. Okay. I'm going to uh, call it a day. Anyway, so yeah, anybody joined in late, by all means, go to the beginning of the live stream. There was some, it's a, it's a, it was a bit of a, not a hell day. It's not not my worst day. I've had worse encounters with uh, individuals. <laughs> you know, I've had a few of those. But this one was, yeah, really, uh, really got me going for a bit. And uh, what I'll do for anybody who you know followed it, that story. Uh, what I'll do, I'll, I'll I'll try and get more of her on film. If I see her, I'm going to uh, stick my camera in front of her, not right up to her like she was to me. I'll keep my distance, I'll just filming, and I'll be talking. Yep, that, that, that's the one. That's the one. If she comes over and interacts, then great. There'll be more more footage for the uh for the uh for the channel. Anyway. Alright, so uh thank you very much for watching, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Oh and uh yeah, if if you're still uh for those who are watching, um my eBay is lowercase. M A D U R dash five six one one. There you go. Check that out and uh, just see what uh, see what's going on. You never know. There might be something on there, and uh, you know, everybody who buys something, whether they watch the channel or not, they you know they get one of my little red cards. So uh, okay. Oh Jesus, please. Oh fuck. All right. I'll try to figure out, uh, all right, Basil Fawlty, cheers, Mark. Yeah, and thank you for that donation, Basil Fawlty. Very generous. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I can't remember which button it was last time that I used. Uh, nope, it's not that one. Okay, it might be this one up here. Ah, are you sure you want to stop streaming? Cancel or end? Yep, that'll be the one. Okay, thank you very much. This should be it.